What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course After Chad. Let's get going. What's up, everybody? Really big thanks to W6 GPS Don for taking the time. I really like. I don't. I don't want to assume the relationship that he has with Kenwood, but I got to be honest. Somebody that's wearing the Kenwood shirt and has all the Kenwood stuff up and is talking on behalf of Kenwood, he's kind of the voice of Kenwood out there, at least in the public-facing uh, part of all this. And you know, he mentioned. You know, other brands, again, not disparaging or anything like that. He was just really open, and that was a really nice conversation. I'm really glad we had that because, um, yeah, I, I, I just I just love having conversations like that with people where they can just be, you know, open and, and just kind of lay it out there. And, again, we don't – there's this weird – you know, when businesses are in – just they're in the same market, so just by their very nature they're competing – that there's this like almost like we can't say anything, you know, we got to be really careful. And, and there's a way to have discussions where you're you're not saying anything negative about the other brands and you're just having this kind of open conversation. And I think he did a fantastic job at that. That was really good. And I, I really hope everybody enjoyed that. Plus, his answers were fantastic. There's so many things we covered on that deep dive. I hope everybody found that uh, really informative. And in fact, I didn't even know about all of those really cool uh you know, audio cues for people who are sight impaired or just, you know, maybe they maybe they just like the audible version, the audio version of subtitles, you know, why not for your radio? So I, I, I found that awesome. And a, a thousand thank yous to Don. That was super cool. And wait, you know, what an announcement. Kenwood's going to come out with a new mobile radio. That is super exciting. So I'm I'm really excited about that. And I'm just great to great to hear. You know, everybody was so worried through COVID. We didn't know what, you know, who was going to be gone, what what companies were going to be in or out. Unfortunately, Kenwood kind of had to, you know, take a little break for a bit. But I'm glad, I'm glad to hear they're back. I know everybody's excited about that. So wonderful, Mitchell Pilot. Thanks again. Appreciate the you know, little controller guy dancing. That's super awesome. And thank you for all your super chats throughout the night. It's really appreciated. So let's go ahead and hop into the Discord after chat. Say hello to our friends there, and uh, and get you can use access. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and it's got SIP. Um, so I'm hoping that what I can do is use that so I can remote into my radio from anywhere and then control it and talk over it. I like it. You wow. know, that gives you an idea, too, because a lot of them newer Motorola, I well, I guess oh, a lot of the Motorola's use so RNDIS nice. drivers, too. I kind of want to go to that IP that it gives me and see what it see what the website displays. Not much. I can tell you that right now. And good evening, Josh. Uh, my mic's not working. My Maybe mic's it's... not working. Is it? Nope. Yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting nope. to run a port scan on it, see what's open. I'm gonna close this. Oh, We're gonna close Discord and reopen. I'll it. tell you what. Well, Hello. Josh is in here, but apparently his microphone into Discord's not working. But we we are going out over YouTube's. Yeah. What the heck? Why am I not? That's weird. Everything looks good. You and gotta your brother love it. Thinks he's so smart because 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 he knows everything. Gotta love, gotta love all that. So I'm going to change this really fast. Test, test, test. Nope. Okay, hold on. Doobie-doo. Can you guys hear me now? Uh, we yes. can hear you now. Okay, here we go. Got it. <laughs> how am I? How am I making it? Am I five nine? Five nine. All five right, nine. Excellent. excellent. Thanks everybody for hanging out in the after chat. Uh, that was a fantastic interview that we did with Don. I really do appreciate him taking the time. Uh, unfortunately, Don is a is a busy person, 
And I, you know, we, we I, I'm selfish. I set this up to be the time for me uh, when I go live, even though 5 p.m. my time's a little bit early. But by the time we get done, it starts getting a little late uh, when you start talking about Central and East Coast and all that stuff. So he wasn't able to hang out, but he said in the future we'll, we'll you know, get him back out here, answer more questions. And, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to have uh, more discussions like that, particularly with the uh, potential Kenwood mobile radio looming on the horizon. That's fantastic news. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. With that said, he wanted, to me, he wanted for me to reiterate that if you do have questions, do join the Facebook group. So if you're talking like general how-to stuff, uh, right, for the, for the D75, go ahead and join the Facebook group. Link's in the description. And then if you, have, if you want to ask him something a little bit, you know, maybe off the side of that, w6gps at yahoo.com. And reminder, if it's anything, comments, suggestions about the potential or the upcoming uh, mobile radio from Kenwood, join the Facebook group, and that's the place for it right now. And if it, that changes, then we'll let you know or they'll let you know in the Facebook group, okay? So excellent. All right. So today's video, uh, our live stream, of course, we're going to take your questions first and foremost. That's going to be our goal here. But uh, think about it in, in your head. What's the best handheld ham radio? Just like a just like a, a firearm, it's the one that you've got on you, right? Is that the right answer? It's probably the the cheesy the one you can afford. The the cheesy fud. That's the there it is, Corpse Lot. The cheesy fud answer is the one you've got on you. But uh, what we like to do to kick all this off is, if you are brand new to the Ham Radio Crash Course After Chat, what we want to what we'd like is that you come forward introduce yourself we give you a big hearty welcome for joining us and then if you have a question your question comes first right away we take it right away so is there anybody here for the first time never been on one of these after chats before that would like to say hi or ask a question come on forward oh we went a little long on the live stream so... oh there's somebody <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Try again. I think you, I think you got signal issues. You're you're doing that robot-y thing, so maybe go to an area where you got a little bit stronger signal, and you'll probably be better off. We'll wait for you though. Go ahead. Try and walk to another area. But if there's anybody else uh, that is here for the first time and like to say hi or ask a question, go ahead and go now. We'll take you next. Well, that's fine, too. We'll just play around with some radios then tonight. Uh, any general questions from anybody new or otherwise? Go ahead. I have a question, Mr. Josh. Mr. Larzul, go ahead. Um, mobile radio antennas. Mm. Uh, I recently was looking at the Comet. Oh, SSB B ten. No, oh. I couldn't find the five. The SBB five. I couldn't find any in stock anywhere at a reasonable price. Okay. Um, but I. Okay, so the situation I'm in is I have a lip mount on the trunk of my car. Sure. Uh, NMO mount and NMO. I, okay. It's an, yeah, it's an NMO mount. And um, routed it real clean. It looks pretty. Like, you don't even see the wire uh, other than going into the trunk. But everything else looks super clean, so I'm happy with that. But It's real pretty-like. It's real pretty-like. Yeah. But the um, I, I was looking at the B10. I think that's what it is yeah. from Comet. And I, w I saw your video about it. And I was going to say, I, I did an NMO mount video, so I, I would go with do it. Do what Josh says to do. Well, well, the, my question mainly was the uh, on the video you you I don't remember if you ever did a follow up to that because you were like it was inconclusive on seventy centimeter, in terms of its transmission. Gotcha. Okay. So my question was because I didn't see it. Was there any? Uh, was there ever a follow up to the transmission uh, gains on a, on that antenna specifically, uh, versus say the SBB five or what have you? No. What I have so. The thing to keep in mind when I do those videos is I'm going back to a specific listening station, my home. And if the antenna doesn't make it to my home, that's not necessarily implying that it doesn't work well on 70 centimeters because a lot of people use 70 centimeters for repeater contacts where 
takeoff angle and and the way the antenna works might send more of that RF a little bit more higher than my listening station where my antenna is not as high as it as it possibly could be. So, um, almost what ranges are we talking about? First of all, I guess I should go back a step. Um, well, I have repeaters anywhere from six not miles up ago. to 25 miles away in my area. Um, 15 miles so to 25 looking... miles. Okay. And, and is there like a ton of, like, I, I, I'm pretty familiar with, with kind of where you're at. Um, how much greenery and buildings do you have to worry about? A lot of greenery. Uh, okay. So 70 centimeters is still going to be pretty good for that. You, you, you'd probably be fine with a larger antenna. Um, the DB10 is a bit of the shorter one, right? That's the the tinier Correct. guy. Mm, it, it's probably going to suffer on two meters more than seventy centimeters, though. So you're probably going to be okay. Uh, from from a fifteen mile standpoint, maybe even up to twenty five miles. But um, I don't have the same situation as you do. Right, all of my repeaters are literally on top of mountains, which I've got like clear line of sight, and it, it doesn't even really matter uh, how far away they are, as long as I can kind of see the summit, I can hit it basically. Right. Well, my main repeater uh, that I access right now um, has a roughly twenty-five mile. Like I can hit it with a five-watt uh, handheld from. Oh, then far. you're you're good. Then you're good. Yeah, you, and it's a seventy centimeter repeater. So oh, then you're you, you're fine. You're fine because you're going to also be jamming like fifty watts into that bad boy, right? Correct. Yeah, you're fine. So th that's I, a good clarification point. Thank you. Yeah, I I just wasn't sure what the performance was in comparison to the SBB five on seventy centimeter. Like I know it's relative, but I know you were doing the comparison relative to the other antennas, and I just wasn't sure what you found eventually between the SBB five and the 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 ten. Um. So I have not really been using I, I generally go with the full length antennas on the on the truck because even though it's on the truck and it gets whacked by drive throughs and, and uh parking garages, I'm more of a two meter user, right? And so I generally want all that length that I can get up on the air. So I'm I'm seldom using shorter antennas that would probably be a little bit better, like the one that's I'm showing right now in my video. That's literally the D B ten right there. Uh, oh no, that's the Comet mm -hmm. NGC NNC. Yeah. Oh no, that's it. That's the 10 NMO. Um, that's going to probably do just fine on 70 centimeters. You 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 won't have a problem with it. It it's it'll be fine. Okay, that's yeah. all I had. I'm pretty Thank confident you. on that. Yeah. Anybody have any comments on that? And anything they want to add? Uh, I have a small comment. Yeah, go ahead. Small comment. So like. How many so, words are we talking? I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. So I'm in. I'm. In, I'm actually. I'm actually in South Jersey, and um, I have the Larson NMO 270, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that can routinely get out, you know, anywhere between 30 to 60 miles on most of the repeaters that are up as far north as Brick, and as far south as sometimes Delaware, depending on where I'm driving at on that day. And I routinely go from Atlantic to the Atlantic City to Philadelphia all the time. All right, I'll, I'll just keep I'll, I'll I'll keep the B10, uh, and then maybe if the SBB5 comes in the stock uh, at a reasonable price, I'll pick one of those up and just compare. I mean, if because the, there are a lot of two meter repeaters by me as well, so I might want to just have that as in my toolbox just in case I feel like swapping it out. But mm -hmm. but all right, I'm good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right on, man. Uh, by the way, there's nothing wrong. I, I like the uh, the quiver concept with mobile antennas. So, wh by the way, what vehicle do you have? You don't mind me asking. Uh, Honda Accord. Oh, okay. Then you're you're generally going to be fine with this. There's no reason not to have a longer antenna on the back of that. You won't hit drive-throughs or anything like that. So you're probably no. fine. Um, I like having the the longer antennas and then the shorter antennas, and I do. I hop into the bed. Like I'm literally showing the mount. I'm using a diesel. Diesel power radio mount, that's what I use for my antenna. Uh, very expensive, insanely expensive. Way more than than probably five or seven antennas. Uh, but I have multiple antennas, and I swap them out depending on you know where I'm going. Um, if I'm not going to be going through drive throughs I swap them out. And I yeah, it's, it worked great. So some are going to be a little bit better for two meters. Some will be better for 70 centimeters. 
you get the idea, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I I wouldn't have a problem putting a longer antenna on the car only because it's on the trunk, and even if it's stuck up like another, <coughs> excuse me, another uh, two feet up in the air, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, uh, it's just a question of like. I'm I'm kind of vain, so like the aesthetics of it, like I didn't want this You're giant whip antenna so like swing, swinging around in my car. So. You probably think this antenna is about you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, oh, wait, man. wait. So you don't like the look of long antennas? Is that that's like the well, most I ham mean, sexy thing you can do, Lars? Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but you know when uh, when the wife looks at the car and she's like, really. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> buddy. Was, yeah, buddy. That's like that. that's right. <laughs> no, it's, it was mainly just like I wanted something like kind of low low profile. Like I, uh, this is a new car. It's a twenty twenty three. I didn't want it to look like. So you want to drill a hole right in the roof, right? Right in the roof, right through the top of right my brand new the, car. Right yeah. through the roof, buddy. I, we got Good Shane. Way. Shane in the Shane is in the chat right now. And he's like, "I'll drive out there. We'll pop a hole in that bad boy. Let's do it." <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Thing like Swiss cheese, buddy. Right through the hood. It's fine. No, through the roof for the through the the oh, yeah, right through the middle of the roof, right? Right through yeah. the cab. Right, you gotta right, be right, right through the my sunroof. Yeah, that's it. Just Pop. just don't hit a crossbar. Just whatever you do, don't hit a crossbar. Yeah, don't hit a crossbar. No, you just I'll, need I'll, to become one of us and buy an F one fifty. No, that's right. I'll stick with the I'll stick with the lip mount on my trunk. It's fine. No, the lip mounts are good, man. I I, I rolled with lip mounts for years and years and years. They're totally they're totally fine. If you want the utmost performance, then the center of a, a sedan like that is going to be the the middle point of that that roof is going to be where it's at. Oh so, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But you know, I'm not drilling a hole to my roof, and I didn't want a big wire hanging into a window. So yeah. Speaking speaking though of F one fifties, work great. One Shane, who's in the chat right now, my buddy, he's going to be coming out to my place tomorrow, and we're getting the HF back in the uh, in the Lightning here. So we're I'm getting back on HF. We're going to get the ATOS back on the air. I'm very excited about that. So that means I'm going to be able to do uh, parks on the air way more frequently because there's literally a park right by my work that I can just hop over after work, boom, 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 get, and then get back on the road. Is that, at is that Doc Weiler? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Doc yeah. Weiler. Yeah. How are you going to be mounting that, Josh? NMO with the stake bed mount, the Breed Love stake, stake bed mount. I'll drop the link. I, see, and... I you think you want to the, see um... uh, a, a WRX with a nice HF antenna. Sorry, say again. You got a WRX and you want to get an HF so antenna? I, dr I drive a WRX and I have my HF antenna. Uh, it's on QRZ if you want to have a quick look. Um, yeah, drop the, link in, drop the link in the Discord so I can pull it up. Uh, Victor Alpha 3 Tango Echo Charlie. Okay, hold on. No, no, you got to do the work for me. Sorry. <laughs> Drop the link. Yeah, I'm getting there, getting there. Thank you, thank hey, you. Jo hey, Josh, can, mm -hmm. uh, can I answer someone's question in the chat? I just saw pop through. Yeah, go ahead. So someone was asking why they should get their ham license as opposed to just getting their easy GMRS. You should um, get both. Get both. Yeah, I, had, I started with GMRS, and I still have GMRS, and I, I love it. It's very useful for what yeah. I would need it for to my wife and my family. You know, it's just really handy to have because my wife doesn't need to take a technician's license to use the radio. She can just yes. hop on. Yes. Um, but the reason why I have the ham radio is because my brother-in-law <laughs> made me <laughs> basically, but also it's, um, it's just, it, it gives you the opportunity in my opinion to uh, get information from outside of the GMRS range and yeah. then relay that through the GMRS service. So, for example, if in in this scenario, um, my wife, in a, in, let's say in an emergency situation, let's just use the most dire of circumstances. Yeah. My wife is out with her GMRS radio. She does not, you know, maybe she can monitor some of the ham bands, but she can't talk on them. Um, but I can hear and transmit on two meter, 70 centimeter from my HT uh, possibly even HF if I go for my general, which I might do at some point when I get the oh, deposit. Now we're up. talking. Now we're talking. But you get you get HF coming in on a general, and then that information from way outside the range of GMRS, and then you relay that information through the GMRS service. It's 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 two services that can link together using human interaction that brings them together. So I think there's a value there. If you if you have a use case for it, if you don't have a use case for it, and you're trying to invent a use case for it, then I would say don't bother. But if you know you have a use for it, then by all means. 
Uh, we can probably get into that at some point. I, I do want to hit everybody's favorite handheld before we get to no, no, no. I was just here. talking no, no. generally. I was just but but I I think that that's we have seen a huge influx in people that are preparedness minded getting more interested in ham radio as a byproduct of the AT&T outage and all that other stuff. And I think they're they're diving in, but they're like diving in on the shallow end, so they're banging their head on the ground. And and they don't really know <laughs> why they're diving in fully yet. And And I think that there's actually a couple of videos that I can make to try and soften the blow a little bit or possibly point them to the deep end a little bit more because... The the thing, and, and I'll, I'll give away a little spoiler alert for a video I'm going to do, you can't buy ham radio knowledge and understanding. You can't buy it. You can't just go buy more radios and then, oh, I'm all educated. I'm good to go. Nor can you buy good shooting prowess, nor can you buy good first aid skills. These are all things that come with training. And to expect that one can just exchange folding dollar bills to get a good radio is, I think, naive. And and that's what I want to try and come at it with. And then it's like, okay, well, now that we've laid down that ground baseline, let's climb up from there. What do you actually do in an emergency? And that's what a lot of these people need is they literally need like one, two, three, four, five steps to take them through a hypothetical situation. The reality is, is that for most people, most everybody, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll take a step further. And I'm, I'm probably going to get some heat for this, but I even think that if you were active military and, and you have like military comms background or you were deployed with and you were radioactive, all that stuff, your radio experience is going to be different than a civilian radio experience, particularly for preparedness, right? Because a lot of those guys, fully encrypted radios, they have an infrastructure that is just insanely, impossibly good that you can't replicate with a civilian type technology. And so you have to you have to have a couple of different options to fill in those gaps to be able to get close to that capability. And a lot of people some some people are just unwilling to take that take that hike with you. And that's okay. That they'll they'll find, you know, they'll get to the point where they're like, you know, I'm good. I I've, I've hit the point where I'm comfortable. And then we can we can just I'm just just going to stop there, right? And I think that's what a lot of this uh, you know, I I think I just need to lay it down like that. So so there, so there you go. There you go. There was somewhere I was going to go with this with another link or something I was going to drop. But um, I, I did show that uh, WRX. By the way, what, what antenna is that on that WRX? That is a that is a beefy boy. Um, so it's called a screwdriver antenna. No, so yes. How it but works. Who, who, no, no. I know what it is. But who, what, who makes it? Oh, it's a homebrew. It's all oh, homebrew. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, you didn't? Yeah, it, it Does works. your QRZ it talk? Works. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pull up your QRZ. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Buddy, look at okay. So you got a home. So is it uh, you can tune it from inside your vehicle? Yes. So there's a little screwdriver motor at the end. Uh, it runs off 12 volts, so it can tune from basically 10 meters down to about 40, maybe. Um, That's pretty you nice. Can, you can get to 80 if you add a coil at the top. Uh, it's just. Uh, when you get down to 40, you're, you're, uh, yeah, it's pretty narrow. <laughs> so I got to say, I don't know that anybody can trust you're a real WRX driver because you deleted your back wing to put an antenna on. So, well, <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. It, no, this version of the WRX, it doesn't have the wing. It's not the STI. It's just the regular, it didn't come with a wing on it. Yeah, but it's, oh, yeah, but it they put come. wings on it. It's not a turbo? 2.5 well, turbo? it's a turbo. It's a turboed engine, but it's it it. So long story short, it's a CVT. It's not a stand, oh. It's not a manual. Yeah, <laughs> this is when they went to the Corolla body style, right? It's the yeah, it's the watered down version of the STI. <laughs> okay, if you will. gotcha. Yeah, it looks great though, man. I I really do. I I like the look. I think if if you don't so. Everybody that sees a Subaru, they're waiting for the huge wing on the back, like boy racer hanging on or, you know, whatever, all that stuff. But then you put that big screwdriver on it. People are like, you got to be passing people. And they're like, does that like add 25 horsepower? What is this guy doing? What is this mad lad doing right now? It's it, it's uh, a, when I that's a the beefy, highway, beefy screwdriver. Yeah, people were slowing down and having looks. Yes. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh, look at you got a little crazy go box set up too. Look at that. I'm I'm diving in on your Cura Z now, so. 
the, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Can you guys hear Oh, wait, you have to go right to the end. That's my floating dock I designed yeah. and built on. Yeah, but have you put a radio on that yet? That's my question. Have you put a radio on this yet? Um, no, not yet. Because uh, I have a solar system with a charge control and everything. I see that. that. Just too much, I see that. Too much EMI. Too much EMI for it. But you haven't tried it. How do you know? Take a QRP uh, radio out there and try it. Well, I'll I'll bring my screwdriver and st install it. And if I can talk to you, Josh, how would you like that? Right from my lake in Quebec. There, how's uh, that? I love. I would love a Quebec contact. That's awesome. I love Quebec. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Right on. Well, thank you for sharing that, man. That's a super cool QRZ deep dive. Appreciate that. He's got his little service monitor, or that spectrum analyzer. But there you go. Cool. Good job, man. Well, VA3TEC. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. All right. So I, I just heard somebody say, hey, can you hear us? We can hear you. Did you have a question for the after chat? Nope. Now he's gone. <laughs> I got a question. I'll take that question. Go. Is it Alex? Go ahead. Uh, I believe it was me. Oh, no. Um, so it was a different guy teed up. Okay, go ahead. All right, so uh, let me uh, make it simple. So I have a, a I have a Wolf River coil antenna, like a vertical, right? Okay. And I built the QDX, okay. And I have, and I'm wondering, should I put the radio right under the antenna with a short coax and use a long, you know, active micro USB or like USB cable, or should I no. use a 30 foot coax? Oh yeah, with a ferrite what, on it. What, what, what band? What bands are we talking about? What's the lowest, uh, the highest band you're going to go to? Um, ten meters. Forty through ten. Yeah, mostly, you're fine. Because yeah. I have a. Yeah, you're fine. So I, it's better to I, keep that radio away from that antenna. Uh, okay. So kind. Let me let me step back a little bit. So the the thing that I can do it either way. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So if you were to ask me, so just straight up. So if you had the run of coax needed, throw a choke at the feed point of the antenna and then throw a choke on the coax before it goes into the radio and you're good. Uh, and then that keeps your USB runs down. You may even want to throw a, a choke on the USB cable, which, I, again, from the live stream earlier today where Don like RF'd his, his uh, video – RFI is something that we all just have to live with and understand that it is going to be omnipresent in our life, and then you have to add chokes to cabling, right? That's just kind of the reality of it. If you're that worried about it, um, I, I would, I would. Well, I wondered I, about I, just the, you know, not having the coax uh, long. You know, you'd get a little bit better receive and maybe a little bit better no. power out. And then I put the heavy lifting on the micro, you know, on the USB cable. Not, not really. Not, so. Not really. So the, the big thing to think about here is uh, coax losses, right? So if, if you're buying semi-decent coax, even at 10 meters, you're not going to pick up a ton of losses. But if you add a very long USB cable, people are already saying that, like a very long USB cable could be impacted by the RFI that's being transmitted by the antenna, even as you start getting it closer to the transmit feed point of the antenna, which is kind of what you're talking about. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll get yeah. rid of that idea because I, I have the ABR with the five ferrites on it, and then I have oh. a very short USB with a, a double wrap ferrite on it right now. So I'll, yeah. I'll just do yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> All so, right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So this is also one of those situations where testing your your station is going to be very important. So if you find yourself in a situation, just throw out the coax, get it all hooked up. You already got the the ferrites on there, so just use that. But uh, if you still have a if you have a problem, you encounter a problem, add a add add a choke towards the the feed point or 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 the the radio wherever the other side of that whole business is. And then if you have a if you continue to have problems, throw some on the USB cable and and do the whole thing until you're like, I found either the solution of the problem, or we're gonna have to rethink the whole design of this. The, the good news is that like coax isn't something that like goes bad on you. It, it can eventually over time, long time, but most of that is like super value added. A thirty foot length of coax is something you're going to use your entire ham career, so yeah, you're you're fine with that. I, another little addendum to that. So my club is going to have me build a common mode choke. Um, can I? Would I be able to slap that on damn near any antenna and just you know it's not going to really affect any kind of resonance or any kind of 
you know, uh, is it going to affect any of that, really? I, I would hesitantly say yes, it, it will not, or sorry, it will, n no, it will not affect anything, but it depends on how you build it, of course. So common mode chokes usually imply a one-to-one -one choke, and you're probably fine. Yeah. Okay. So I just don't, I don't know sorry. what your plans are, So, but I'm assuming, yeah, it's not going to affect anything. So if I just, I got a rig expert, if I just test the homage on it and it comes out to 50, I should be good to go, right? And I can slap it on pretty much anything. Uh, yeah, potentially. Yeah, potentially. Those okay. are incredibly right, valuable to us, yeah. Uh, Corpse Law with a super chat. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. When will you be in Jersey again? We need more fried pickles. So I'm going to be in the East Coast uh, this summer. I'm doing a tour with uh, the entire family. We're all going out there. And we're going up through New York. Uh, so I don't make the travel plans. My wife does. Leia. So uh, I'll let you let y'all know, but uh, it, it's it's going to be a whirlwind of activity. So if I can if I could squeeze you in there, I will absolutely. I'll let you know. Uh, Quebec cottages. No, nah, we're cottages. not. We're, uh, dude, I want to. I, I know that my wife wants to go to Quebec a lot too because uh, she watched that one episode of Anthony Bourdain where he's in like the ice house and they got a potbelly stove and they're cooking like foie gras on the stove and she's just like, oh, we gotta do this. But uh, a lot of the reason why we're doing it is for my son's uh, school projects. I think it's it's school related. So we got uh, a bunch of spots we got to hit. I think we are going to Niagara Falls though at some point, which is like, all right, let's do it. So I I, I don't know. I'm 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 going along for the ride. Don't worry, I'm gonna have radio. We'll be live streaming some of this. So. What part of the country? Bring am I your in? APRS. Bring your APRS and then pa and then DGP pack it out and we'll see where you're going. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll bring some. Uh, you know, that's what I might do. I might buy some like flat pack kit radios and I'll do a beacon and I'll hide the radio somewhere and I'll tell you guys where it, from the the beacon. I'm like, here's go get it and then you guys go find it. And you're in there. Uh, definitely going to tour the Yingling Brewery. Uh, that is definitely a part of elementary school uh, <laughs> education. Link Yingling, one of the, I think it is the oldest operating brewery. If you if you connect the the years together, I think I think that's how that works. But uh, yeah, shout out to Yingling, one of the best cheap beers you can get from my point of view. So also up where uh, PA New York and Jersey meet, um, the Appalachian Trail also meets, which is a nice POTUS spot. Dude, I'm telling you, I, I I love the PCT, but I really do also want to do the Appalachian Trail at some point in my life. I don't know when that'll happen. Parts of it got to get up to it. High Point, New Jersey, man. It's a it's a it's a it counts. I, I gotta tell you, there, there's there's no greater experience I've had as as someone who likes to drive fast than going on the Jersey Turnpike, where drivers actually understand they need to merge out of the fast lane if somebody is approaching them from behind at a greater rate of speed. I was driving very quickly to meet up with Lars Zool, literally this man, uh, to meet up with yep. him. And I, I, I had gotten out of some work thing, and I'm like, I got to go, guys. We got to go. And I was cooking. And, yeah, everybody on the Jersey Turnpike graciously moved aside, let me pass on by. No ego involved with it. Just let me get on with my business. I was like, got lots of respect for the Jersey just from that alone. <laughs> just yeah, but try that. that on 295. Good luck. Yeah, well, that's a different situation. I'm just saying the turnpike is where it took me, and boy, howdy, I moved. So Chris Larson with the Super Chat. Thank you so much. Hi, Josh. New tech, new ICOM 7300. Cannot get feedback down when I transmit. Not aiming mic towards the speaker, but when I key up, there's a tremendous amount of feedback. RF at 50, mic gain at 50. What else, Dude, what else do you got in the mix? Is it the stock mic? You might have to join us on the Discord for this one because I got a ton of questions. What what else is nearby? I think his I think his monitor is on because there's the monitor. Oh, turn the, turn, the turn the monitor off. Turn the monitor off. Yeah, you, it's not feedback. It's the monitor. You got that monitor on. Uh, I don't have a 7300 in front of me, so I can't. Uh, it's under the. So if you click the right multi button, I believe the monitor thing is there. And if you see the little blue sliver is active, click it, and it'll turn it off, and then the monitor's off. It's not feedback. Oh, sh that was it, guys. You got it. You got it. That was a, that was a fast one. There you go. Congrats to the I think chat. I did that one. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So shout out to uh, Monitor. That's not 
That's not feedback. That's actually on purpose. So some people like to have a little bit of a monitor where it's offset a tiny bit. Uh, you, you do this a lot for CW. You want that side tone so you can hear the CW that you're you're sending. Um, but the, yeah, that was it. You're, you're, you're not, you're not, uh, no feedback. You're good. You're good, man. All right. Question, Josh. Go ahead, question. I have a digi rig that I'm having issues with. A digi rig. Okay. I picked it up. I uh, set all the uh, parameters. I'm trying to just listen in on all APRs, APRS. So I've got like a, a bullfang and, uh, Got it all plugged in. I'm on uh, the software. Fire that up, and as soon as I hit connect TNC, it locks up and transmit. And ah. on the uh, on the receive, I listen on the radio. It's just transmitting a low line level. There's no nothing else on it. Yeah, it it sounds like that RFI is getting into the uh, USB connection and dropping the USB connection. Does you, does your computer uh, lose the connection? Like if you're looking at Device Manager, does the port drop off? Yeah, it sort of locks up, does some screwy things, changes menus and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're you're getting RFI back into the uh, to the radio or to the computer. So, what which radio are you uh, interfacing into? It's a Biofang or one of the other ones that are like a Biofang, but uh, just a Kenwood interface. I bought the cable for it. Got the uh, you know the USB that's got both the toroids on it, and mm -hmm. it uh, yeah. I've tried it actually on two different computers and it still does the same thing so here's what i would do just as uh to to single this out as an issue before i send you off to buy a bunch of stuff uh drop the power output to the lowest setting and try it again okay can yeah. you do that live? It, 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 um yeah i could probably try it well go ahead uh we'll take some more questions and keep talking you go off and try that and then come back and let us know if that uh either causes the problem or mitigates it Josh, I just put a, there's an idea, is a, a USB isolator. I put it in the chat if you want to have a look. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, we'll take a look at that. But I, I'd like to hear back from him. If the if the lower power gets rid of the issue, then most likely it's a, it's a choking issue. And then we'll talk about isolation. Right on. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, let's, so let's go back. Is there anybody here for the first time? Never been here before. Would like to say hi or ask a question. We would like to give you the time to get the information you're looking for for amateur radio. So go ahead. This might be a first. I don't know that we have anybody. Okay. Well, hey. Uh, is it Alex? Alex, are you trying to say something? All right. Yeah, you're you're keying up, but I'm not hearing you. So maybe you are our first timer that, that doesn't have the mic connected. So uh, go go sort that out. Lower bottom part of the app, if you go to user settings or if you're on the iPhone, <coughs> bring up the voice and audio settings. No questions, just entertained by the chat. Well, thank you for hanging out. We appreciate that. Oh, geez, I need some water. Hey, Josh, not my first time, but I'll, uh, can I throw a question out there? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so I've got a pair of older ICOMs that um, they're 706. They don't have a, um, a waterfall, so I'm trying to do the thing with the uh, with an SDR. I've got a Nuelec, um, you know, like a pan adapter. I have one of the um, antenna shares. It's the Amazon one, the DC to 160 uh, megahertz, not the MFJ one. Um, when I transmit, um, it, it switches over. I've got it hooked up to my foot switch. I verified that when I do that on the SDR side, it shorts the inner um, element to the shield of the of the you know the SMA connector. Okay. But if I have the power anything above low, which I'm is somewhere below like five or so watts, and if I'm not talking quietly it locks up the SDR. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's like an RFI thing because I'm also using an up converter. Um, Sounds like an RFI I've got thing. A, Boy, RFI yeah. has been the problem with this this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I've read some things about people saying that they have put them in metal enclosures to completely block that out. Um, thinking that, but I guess one of my questions is I, I've got a few extra like Palomar engineers, um, Mix 31 
um, clip-ons hanging around? Would it be better to throw longer uh, runs of coax in there or put more chokes on, or should I try putting it in the enclosure? Well, since um, you already have the stuff, I would say yes, go that route first before spending any money. Yeah, add more chokes, add a longer coax cable where you can add the choking capability. Because, so keep in mind, an enclosure, the RFI is not getting in through, like, not necessarily all of it is getting in through the surface mount components. It's just straight coming through the transmission line. So USB, RF, you know, the RF coax line, whatever it is, that's how it's getting in. It's like a straight, it's a straw, right, that, that it's all going through. And so... Too much of that is going to cause a problem, particularly on the the USB connection. So, yeah, yeah. Add, add more chokes and try that out. Comment. There's a yeah, comment. comment. I've got an IC706, and it seems like if you don't make every effort or attempt, even while you're talking on it, transmitting, uh, my 703 does the same thing. It's, it, it gets a little back feed in the microphone even, and you can hear it in the headphones. So choke it if you can. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll try that. I, I found that they were, you know, the, there's like some harmonic problems too. I've got them as my satellite rig too, and I had to, I had to put a whole bunch of um, bandpass filters in it. So, yeah, I'll try choking it out and see if that helps. Coleman. Go ahead, comment. Yes. Have you got the uh, Icon filtered DC lead as well? I have a a clip on on the DC lead it, with it's it goes through. I've got both the the positive and the negative going through again a, a mix thirty one, um, and I yeah. think it goes through maybe three times. Yeah, because uh, the Icon actually made a filtered DC lead because they had trouble with this. It would get RF in its own power yeah. supply and screw itself up. Mm. So yeah. the more the more the more ferrite you can stick on that DC lead, and also they're prone to uh, voltage drops across the power supply cable. So the shorter that okay. cable is, the better it is. Mike also gotcha. sounds like Should he has a bit I... of a cold. How you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not coming. I, I, I sound like Barry White with uh, with a headache. <laughs> so i've got a a switch mode power supply should i move a linear power supply up to higher in my priority list of of things to get next or is that not necessarily the same issue no it's not the same issue but i what i would say is you need to make sure you filter every damn thing off well I, i've got yeah. a 706 myself and uh, there's a reason that panama uh engineering sell a really good uh, ferrite bead kit for those things Hey, I appreciate you t telling him about the shortening of the, the core, uh, power cable because I have an extra super duper long one, and that that might be my issue still. You can choke a power line too. You can add a ferrite to a power line. That works too. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look on the the European seven oh sixes or the the seven thousand. You'll see it's got this gigantic metal box about halfway down the lead, which is literally full of chokes and capacitors. It's about just a bit bigger than a packet of cigarettes. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. There you go. Well, a Mix 31 and a 240, well, that I've got two of those. Is it uh, raining anything? where you're at, James? You got a bunch of water in the background. Oh, I'm washing dishes. That's what oh, I do okay. whenever I listen he, to the, the chat's asking if you're, like, peeing in the background. It's like, all right, James, calm down now. <laughs> but you're washing no, dishes. I, all right, all right. <laughs> I, I remember that one chat where, you, where what? You, you muted and you didn't mute, remember? No way that that happened. That definitely didn't happen. <laughs> I was going to say, Josh never mutes. Yeah, no, no. I definitely didn't do that live or anything. All right. Uh, I have a question for the gentleman, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. When you when you put your choke on, can you wrap the cable around the choke a few times, or is it just wrapped once? The more you can wrap it, the um, better. Yeah, on which so I've got, um, I've kind of got it zigzagging in on itself. So like, there's there's a bunch of cables because I've got an AM and an FM band. Um, 
uh, the opposite of a band pass. Forget what it's called. Um, I've, so I've got like a couple different, uh, they're like RG three one six size. A couple different points along the way are going through it, but n- none of them are like going through more than once before it hits the next component. But to answer the question specifically, yeah, just if you can loop more loops of coax through your ferrite, do it. You're Sweet. Mul- Thanks, Josh. You're multiplying your impedance. Yeah, that was basically the question. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do. That gets you the, well, the, the most value out of a ferrite, too. So, yeah, I hope yeah. Uh, think we answered your question. So, thank you. Yeah, I guess uh, one, one quick question again. I, I forgot who mentioned it. Something about, you know, um, so my... The, the radio and, and my computer are both hooked up to my um, my station ground. Is is there, like, some sort of um, shielded USB cable I should try looking for? Because I've tr- uh, I, I feel like I have, but there's not really, like, anything. Yeah, what's the radio again that you're using? Uh, so it's a... Yeah, I, IC706. With a digirig. No, uh, no. So uh, just the the IC seven hundred six and then a, a new elect uh, NESDR. New elect. Uh, what type of cable? So that is a USB A to B cable. No, uh, it's no, uh, it's, it's just a, it's just a, a dongle. A. It's just a dongle, right? Yeah, I've got I've in the I've got a. It's probably a three foot cable. Well, actually, I tried the three footer. Going, which I guess this probably should have been something I realized before I'm saying it out loud here. I had like a three footer that went from the the dongle to the computer, and then it was slightly better when I used like a one footer going from the dongle to the computer. Uh, Josh, Mike, Mike uh, uh, Kamer recommended recommended the trip light, and I went and bought one that has uh, uh, ferrites at either end. That's what I'd recommend. Yeah, so so yes, USB cables are fraught with danger, and uh, USB micros in particular are the worst. USB micros are, I when we can step away from USB micro, we're going to be all better off as a community. USB A and B are generally pretty good; they're pretty shielded, and USB C also pretty good. I, I have the most confidence in USB C at this point. Uh, DigiRig sells a USB isolator, and yeah, there's there's a USB A pass through on the other end of that, so you can be relatively confident that you're not going to be floating the RFI back into the computer. But in the same vein, choke the entry point where the connection is to that dongle, and then also on the other side on the up converter, and you're probably going to be fine. Again, if you have this equipment. Do that first before investing more dollar bills in trying to solve a problem that you may already have the equipment for, if that makes sense. Right. Um, would it be worth, I mean, sort of contrary to your last point there, would it be worth trying to get a longer run of SMA so I, I'm plugging the dongle directly into the computer as like a maybe eventual Wait, solution? are you not plugging the dongle directly into the computer? No, I've got a USB A, a female A to, to male A extension. Oh, okay. So then I can't account for that. Um, that should also probably be choked, right? If you think about it. Um, yeah, for sure. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, you, you might want to go with longer coax so that the dongle can go into the computing body, the device, you know, whatever, and then just have longer coax, and then you can have much more efficient choking with the coax. Right. Million dollar question. Um, Million dollar. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> um, USB, like a USB extension cable versus like a coax, like, you know, theoretically coax, you know, having a shield on it, probably less susceptible to RFI than, you know, USB or no. So straight up, uh, I have I, I have a ton of USB extension cables in the shack that I use. In fact, I have one that I've used in multiple live streams that has had no problem. That Amazon Basics USB-A uh, male to USB-A female, I've had no problems with. I've got them in 6-footer links, 12-footer links. I've used them on video, like literally running. And cameras are the worst. Cameras are the things that drop out on you more than anything. I've had no problem with those. So th- the reality of it is is that there's really no solution to your problem other than finding what works for you. Because I, I can think- tell you, like, okay, go buy the USB Basics or the, USB, uh, the Amazon Basics USB A to A 
converter or extension and you might get a bad batch. I bought mine six years ago, it feels like, and mine are great, but you could buy the ones today and they might suck. The reality is, is that like when it all comes back to the, the fundamentals, choke it up, always be choking, ABCs, the ABCs are always be choking, and that'll get you through most problems. And if you need to add a little bit length, a little bit longer length of cable to, uh, to accommodate choking, do it. Uh, comment. Go ahead, comment. Uh, yeah. So from what I understand so far, computer to long USB cable to a new elect SDR to uh, SMA cable. Is that what I'm understanding the setup is right now? Yep. On the SMA side, I've got the, um, the, the antenna share to an FM um, filter, a broadcast FM filter, a broadcast AM filter, the up converter, and then the new elect. All right, the up converter is just for you to listen to HF, or uh, what? What? What are you using the up converter for? Yeah, sure. Um, Get to HF. Up converter to up convert to HF, and I'm using it for um, you know my my HF as a pan adapter. If you can get away with it, I would. My my big suggestion here: get away from the new elect SDR. Uh, I'm not. This is from. We're my not trying to. My Let me <laughs> spend your oh, money. Oh, let Hold Frank on, spend your money. <laughs> the new Alex I have found in my personal experience have been extremely bad for RF noise environments like that. I would go and get like like an RT- like bad like bad news when there's RFI or I, I guess they don't yeah. create RFI, right? No, no, they're bad news when it comes to RFI. They'll just drop out randomly and a whole bunch of stuff. My RTL SDRs, on the other hand. Do not do the same thing. Oh. So I, would, I have not I had that problem. Dropping. Okay, I, so there you go. Two different opinions. Yeah. So uh, let let's let's put this into context. So you are you are using the SDR as a as basically kind of like a pan adapter for your for your radio. So you're you're trying right. to follow because your seven hundred six doesn't have a waterfall pan adapter solution. You're you're trying to use the SDR in that capability. That's my exactly. Understanding. Yeah. So you have a you have a, a switching device, an antenna switching device. So you're sharing the same antenna, or you have a different antenna. I should have. This is right. actually fundamental. I should, probably should have started with the whole chain. Yeah, same antenna. It's got three connections on the back. Two uh, SO two thirty nine. One for the antenna. One for the the radio, and then one for the SDR, and then it can either do RF sensing or um, you feed it with a, like a 3.5 millimeter on the foot pedal. Uh-huh. And what it does is it um, switches. So when the, when it, the foot pedal is not it pressed, deafens it. It deafens it. Yeah, it, it shorts. Yeah. The yeah. Okay. So here's the dumb question: Are you sure that device is actually working correctly? Right. Yeah, that's what I checked first. So I I, I got a multimeter, and when I oh, when I pressed the foot pedal, oh, all right. Pedal, I like the answer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When He's I cooking. press the foot He's pedal, cooking. you know, I hear the relay switching, and I checked. It's got zero ohms on the okay. on the SDR connection. Zero ohms from the shield to the center conductor. Yeah. Okay. So then you're pretty confident that that all that RF is getting picked up on the other side of that chain, right? Right, yeah. After that, I don't know if like maybe the up because the up converter is also an um, um, it's uh, a powered device um, as well over USB. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's got it. Uh, oh, you know, like you said, it's a USB micro cable going into that. So maybe it's getting you know. Oh, it's RFI USB micro the power side of the up converter. Yeah, my USB, uh, my up converter for new uh, for the new elect is USB B. You, it's USB micro. Yeah, it's the uh, the Hammett Up Plus. So so I'm if... gonna I'm gonna point the finger at wherever the USB micro connection is. Start uh, choking there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was th- even thinking because I've got it I've got it plugged into a wall wart. I was thinking about getting like a you know like a little um, voltage down converter to to plug that into my power supply and give that the five volts that way in case that's it not was... going to solve that won't solve the problem if your power's clean. The problem is you're picking up RF on the transmission on the seven oh the seven oh five seven oh six, right? So yeah. you you need to choke that out so that it's not getting back into the computer because that's where your problem's coming from. Now, if right. you do yeah. isolate that, that's actually okay. Now I take that back. So if you do, that's actually an interesting point too. If you can take that micro USB and don't 
pow- are you powering it off of the computer right now? No. So the the micro USB only powers the up converter, and that's coming straight from a uh, um, a, wall a, a power brick. Yeah, wall wart plugged okay. into my power strip. So I'm I'm less worried about that. Um, a- anything that's going into your computer that's USB, you should choke it, right? Particularly being in okay. close proximity of your transmitting radio. That would be my that would be my statement. Awesome. You've got a lot Comment. of things to. Okay, go ahead, comment. But r- real quick, and I I yep. know I'm going to throw something out that's you know it's going to involve money. He's going to tilt the uh, apple cart but, right here. But yeah, but 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 sometimes so, sometimes paying for a a solution might be worth your time in in chasing all this down, unless you're getting good valuable troubleshooting skills and lessons out of this. I did something like what he was talking about. Um, before with my radio before i got the flex and i i used an sdr play it does not need enough converter you're you're reducing the amount of equipment that you've got there uh and it does seem to work pretty well in that type of a situation and the, the sdr plays are not that expensive they're like 120 bucks yeah i was definitely thinking about it. i had the new Alex sitting around so uh, you know i i rolled the dice and, and decided to go with the whole up converter route but you know well, and no, absolutely and they're great they're great to mess with you know they're they're great for like hey i want to throw something on a raspberry pi and and do this latest trunking software from 1987 i mean those things are great for that kind, <laughs> of, latest, kind of project the latest trunking software for 19 yeah <laughs> that's yeah. for frank and shame yeah that's yeah. true uh, true i thought gray man that you were gonna say and just go get a flex yeah just go get no, a flex what <laughs> No, Let I, Gray I, Man not, spend your money. Big Jim, I'm not Big Jim. I don't have this kind of money. That just yeah, about I, cracked I, me up though, because you said that. I was like, huh? See, at least my idea was reasonable as far as money spending goes. <laughs> well, uh, I, you know, to to a certain degree, there is a there is a threshold, right? Of of uh, you know, how much are you getting out of it? Time and are you learning something from it? Versus uh, just beating your head up against the wall, and you know, in, in kind of evaluating it from that standpoint. I'm I'm always going to go back to the you know, as my dad. My dad was a AMP mechanic out of the Air Force. Always worked on planes, and he always told me, "Son, start with the stuff you have on hand. Start your fixing process by literally like." And and what's funny about my dad. He didn't know it, but like it's the same process we go through in engineering. You isolate problems, you isolate a variable, almost like you would with a, with a scientific experiment, and you try and like take something out or modify it. One thing, retest. Problem gone, not gone. Okay, so return the issue, return that thing back to its state, change another issue, and you just keep going down the list, right? You just keep going down the list. And this is what my dad told me. Troubleshooting cars. First car was a 67 Mustang. That's where I learned how to fix stuff. And you just you, you, you change one thing and test. Change another thing and test. But you got to set it back, the first thing back. And then after you get through everything that you think of, then you start doing multiples, right? Because then they could be in conjunction with each other. And it's, it, it's a process you go through, and it takes time. But the time is always like valued learning, right? And and the fundamental point though is that you you need to work with what you have on hand first before you start exploring spending the money to fix the problem. Because I can always throw money at a problem and it'll go away. As an as an engineer, I've definitely done that. C- program company, here's here's my invoice. Spend this money and the problem goes away. Okay, done. Follow up. But. In this case, you have some equipment, and I would lo- love for you to explore that stuff that you have because I feel like it's going to solve the problem. And if it doesn't, like you could literally go do this live right now, and we'll we'll come back to you later. Or you you chime back in, in in an open spot, and we'll try and help you out. Or we can talk to you next week. We're, we're literally going to – we'll be here for you. Follow up. Yeah, I appreciate all the help, everyone. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll quit hogging the chat. No, you're good. Go ahead, follow up, and then we're going to move on. Who had the follow up? Go ahead, follow up. Oh, am I there? There we go. Yeah, you're I just there. Did the, I just did the uh, tryout with it uh, live. I slept, left everything on here on Discord and everything else and uh, plugged it all in and uh, hit the join, 
and uh, or connect the, the TNC, and of course it started buzzing like crazy. So I unhooked everything, and it was still buzzing. And I looked down, and uh, my transmitter's still on, so I unplugged it. But it was changing everything rapidly uh, around the room here, and I think it may have something to do with this brand new uh, uh, LED mouse pad you sent me a while back. And uh, I'm gonna go through and start unplugging everything, get down to the basics, and start over again. Well, just unplug the mouse pad and see if the problem goes away. You're talking about me. You're talking about Quirky QRP, that mouse pad? I literally have it. Uh, you're talking about the big desk pad thing? Yeah, I, I won one from you and you sent it to me. Well, I didn't send it to you. Quirky QRP did. But, okay, still. So did you unplug the mouse pad and did the problems go away? Instead of tearing up the whole yeah. shack, did, did you unplug I'm that? I'm gonna back out and unplug every. Oh, I got mics and and. Whoa, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's what I'm talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. hold on, hold on. Unplug the mouse pad and do, does the problems go away? Oh, I don't know. I can I can try that. Yeah. You, you should probably start there. <laughs> if you think that the mouse pad, the 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 desk pad that we sent you caused a problem. Unplug it. And it's see easy, it's easily it's easily one of the issues, but I got seven other things plugged in. Well, I I know, but but you're you're alluding to the fact that the pad caused a problem. So disconnect the pad and see if the problems go away. I thought this was a comment on the previous thing. What where are we going with this? You just wanted to. What what are we doing? <laughs> What's going on? This is. This is the previous one before that, I think, that had a issue with the DigiRig keying everything up and not unkeying stuff. Sure. Okay. Well, well, give it a, give it a shot. See, see if you unplug the mouse pad, and everything goes away, and we're gonna be we're gonna be good. All right, we're gonna go. Answer is. Oh, we lost you. Answer is, and then you cut out. Come back. Okay, no, that was it. The answer is I unplugged the uh, mouse pad and uh, the problem is still there. Problem is still there. Okay, then you have other problems. So now, yes, you probably... So again, going to back to what my dad told me, is you need to take one thing out of the chain at a time. So if you take something out and you retest and the problem's still there, put that thing back in the chain and then take the next thing out of the chain and test that. Eventually, you will find something that is causing the problem. That's what we're looking but, for. But make a note of what you tested already, so you don't retest it a second time. And, and if you, well, no, no mechanic ever wrote anything down. Let me just say that. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, write it down. Write it down. Okay, this is gonna be something I have to get back to you on. Okay, you get back to me. We'll be here. All right, we're going to – oh, wait. No, we're not doing that yet. Hold on. I'm going to get ready. Uh, I'm getting my FT8 ready, but f we're going to talk to our YouTube friends here in a second. So got to do this first. I was doing some single si – actually, I was doing some CW earlier. All right. We're going to say hi to our friends here in the YouTube land on the Discord. So first, hey, we got Bill. Bill, you there? Ham Radio Tectonics. Go ahead. Is Bill on the line? See, it's always it's always tricky being the first one on the list because you get called and you're like, I'm, I'm washing dishes. We'll come back next. Eric, Hamstick Eric, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, doing some research here, trying to get a uh, a good, very portable setup for 80 meters going, and uh, struggling to find a solution that's going to be good enough. Yeah, what? Uh, where where is your journey taking you? Because that's not a fantastically portable band usually yeah so right now i'm looking at getting a uh icom what is it uh ah730 uh random wire tuner mm -hmm. and basically making like a little uh like speaker stand with like a dx commander pole going up it and just using that to tune up on it i'm trying to get worked all states on 80 meters so i can have the uh the five band worked all states um, nice. Which is funny because I currently have, I think, eight bands worked, but I can't get the award. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, for five band worked all states, you need 10, 15, 20, 40, and 80. Um, I've got 10 through 40 plus satellite. Um, 
but because I don't have 80, I can't get five band. So trying to uh, come up with a solution for my 12 foot by 12 foot backyard. Oh yeah, that's, that's difficult. So we would love to hear your thoughts. I'm thinking vertical. Vertical is loaded vertical yeah, is probably I, the, the thought, right? To, to be fair, I do have more room than 12 foot by 12 foot. Um, but I have 12 foot by 12 foot of area that I can keep permanent. Everything else I can, like there's area behind my house that I can set up in. But by the time I'm done with it, I have to take it down. So 80 foot vertical is not on the list, right? No, no. Uh, nothing nothing with guy lines. Um, yeah. yeah I, DX command? DX, no, DX commander on 80 meters requires the dog leg wire that, that shoots out in some direction. So that, that could be semi-permanent. That's true. But uh, you're probably looking at a loaded vertical, so you're probably going to have a very high Q if you do that. Yeah, and that's fine. I'm, I'm planning on basically doing it only on FT8. Um, so it's I've done the uh, the um, the EA arc or the Emergency Amateur Radio Club of Hawaii in tennis, yeah, which is 25 feet. Yeah, random wire. Feet. That's a random wire. Yeah, though, right? and that's I've been able to hunt some DX that's in the Pacific, um, but you know those are people on islands with absolutely zero noise floor. Right. So. You know, they can hear me. Yeah. Um, but trying to get to the East Coast on 80 meters is going to be uh-uh. going to be a challenge. That's that's already a difficult band just off of uh, off of propagation to be able to get to the East Coast. You'd have to put some power behind it. Yeah. And, right, because uh, you're, 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 you're talking multiple I'm... reflections. So you're, you're, you're talking multiple bounces to get to the East Coast. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to do it uh, on 100 watts or less. Yeah. So, I mean, I've difficult. gotten to the East Coast. Um, you know, through other people having the, the bigger station, like I've been able to hit Florida, uh, but the Northeast is going to be much more of a challenge. On 80? Yeah, I did it on 80 meters with the, uh, the 25 foot random wire. Wow. That's impressive. Good job. Good for you. Yeah. And, and then I hit Antarctica with it as well. So, I mean, sometimes you just get lucky and, uh, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I just got Serbia on FT8. Oh my God! Thirty meters just blew up, guys. Thirty meters is hot. Get on thirty meters right now. <laughs> Get on thirty meters right now. Holy smokes! It just blew up. We're hot, guys. We're hot on thirty. Let's go. Um, but I just got home, dude. Don, get on thirty meters right now, dude. It's your band. It's your time. Get on there. <laughs> this is hot. I just got Serbia. Let's go. All right. Um, yeah. You, uh, man, I, by the way, that's an impressive contact on a random wire, like a 30, 30 what would you say, 30 foot random wire about? Uh, 25 feet. 25, 25 foot random wire. Or maybe it's 29 wire, feet. And you're running on 80 meters. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I, that antenna has actually gotten me all the way uh, to Swain's as well on 160. Um, wow. So some sometimes you just get lucky. I was running 15 watts on the G90. Uh, when I did that, so it's kind of oh, wow. So you're already low power too, man. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah, sometimes you just get lucky. Um, yeah, but I mean, ideally, I'd like to either use the 7300 or the flex so I can get 100 watts. Sure. So right now, I'm looking at basically a long wire um, tuner, like a, a a tuner that has the uh, the wire port on it, so I can just connect a wire mm-hmm. and then just run it up vertical. Nicely done. All right. Very good. All right. Who's next? Let's see. Hey, Josh. This is Bill. Oh, Bill's back. We're going back to Bill, man. How you doing, bud? Hey, man. I really appreciate you uh, calling me out today. I, you caught me out. Would you believe I was washing dishes? No. What, well, we already had somebody that was washing dishes earlier. So, yeah, I mean, we got to take care of business. You're, you're, it's fair. Thanks for hanging out, man. What's going on with you? Appreciate you. Uh, not a lot on the channel. Tons in the shack, but not a lot. I've uh, been following you on the Meshtastic stuff, and I've uh, got a couple of nodes up here working on solar nodes, trying to learn what I'm doing. Um, then there's a, a Digipeter thing that I've, uh, I've I've just down a bunch of rabbit holes, and I don't know how to translate them necessarily into videos, but I'm working on it. And then... Um, of course, CW, CW Poda, I just went out and did two last week. So I'm still active. I just haven't uh, figured out how to translo- translate into those into videos that uh, don't bore the crap out of anybody. Nah, you're good, man. Just put it out there. It, yeah, it's... that's what... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. No. <laughs> That's what TL says. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. But so I've got a couple in the pipelines and I just had a couple of mishaps. When I first got that QMX, I was really excited about it. Ran out and did a bunch uh, or several. Sorry. Bunch is not good with this crowd because they do bunches. I do several. Uh, did several potas and uh, I goofed up my audio and that just brought me down as far as. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't believe in luck necessarily, but my uh, my video luck went down, and I just got to step up my game. But uh, definitely always doing POTA, watching you guys, paying attention, and uh, like I said, doing a little mesh-tastic now, DigiPeter stuff. That DigiPeter Digi that um, I found on AliExpress, the T-Tower, it, uh, it works. It works. It um, connects to the Internet through the phone, and it also transmits to... Um, um, on, on um, APRS network. So I'm going to do a video about that. But if anybody's interested, take a look. You know, I have had, uh, you know, some of those shootout videos that I do at the park where I go back and forth with the SDR and I show the results and all that stuff. I've screwed up my audio multiple times doing those videos. I've had to reshoot some of those videos like three, sometimes four times. Uh, so I hear you. It's it's just the nature of the beast. There's nothing worse, and that's where you like start like all these mental checklists or putting extra stuff in the bag to make sure I don't screw up, and I got a second mic and all that stuff. Like it's it, it just happens, and you just got to roll with it. Uh, but believe me when I say like you put it out there, people will watch. So uh, definitely, definitely do what you got to do, man. Definitely, definitely like sharing, and uh, so I'm not going to hold you up, move on to the next uh, person, and I appreciate your shout-out, and uh, I'll see you guys out there. Yeah, are you going to Hambenchen? I'll see you there, I guess, right? I shouldn't say, but I might show. All uh, right. I, I don't think anybody from work's paying attention to the oh. uh, ham radio. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I have every intention of going, and I'm also planning on doing the more expo as well. Oh, right on. Yeah, the more Expo is going to be big. There's a lot of ham radio folks that are going out there. So it's going to be fun. Good job. Have fun. All right. Very cool. All right. Next is Frank. How's it going, Frank? Uh, good evening, Josh and everyone. Is my audio decently okay? Yeah, decently okay. I'd say it's even good. Okay, good. <laughs> Using a new setup right now, so just want to make sure everything was good. I did a check earlier and it seemed okay, but just want to make sure. Uh, not much going on here. Uh, I'm actually busting through a bunch of videos to hopefully get started. Not this coming week, but the week after going up on my YouTube channel with the Tuesday Night Ham Radio playlist, which includes uh, your next YouTuber, Gray Man Pota, Tim, and many others that you should all come uh, subscribe to. And we lead up to the uh, Ham Radio Clubhouse at uh, 7 p.m. Central on Tuesday nights. Right on, right on. All right. Well, thanks for uh, joining us out here. Appreciate it. Uh, man, we got a lot of really good contacts on 30 meters right now, everybody. If you if you have a capability to get on 30 meters, you should probably get out there. I'm I'm not kidding when I say that for DX. Uh, next is Tim Grayman Poda, and uh, thanks for your comment earlier on the show too, but uh, earlier uh, also on the after chat. So thanks for being in here, man. How's it going? Oh, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Staying uh, staying busy. Um. Was I'm actually editing a video for 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 Tuesday night right now. So, um, talking about uh, you know th things we should do, thinking about protecting our radios and and our investments and stuff like that when we go out to do these uh, parks on the air activations. So, so it's like bring uh, it done. Well, I <laughs> let's just say my video starts out with when I shipped off the Navy boot camp. My mom told me to always make sure I had protection, and I'll leave that up to people's interpretation. <laughs> what but, do you mean? Uh, I had yeah, my so... nine millimeter automatic, baby. Yeah, yeah there we go. So, yeah, just staying busy with that, getting uh, getting ready, spending some stuff up uh, on my overlanding channel. Uh, kind of had taken a hiatus from that to, to focus on the uh, ham radio stuff uh, this, this past summer. So, uh, I'll, along with, with Bill, I'll be, uh, out at the more expo this year with Jason and, uh, oh, that's a big think, crew that's going. Uh, Frank Good tank's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, uh, digital rancher is going to be there. Um, uh, 
Ham Radio Crusader, uh, Freddie Max going to be there. So uh, Kyle, AA0Z, and there might be a couple others I'm, I'm missing. Jason 2.0. Well, he's yeah, already Jason two point Yeah, and uh, you don't know Frank might make a uh, unscheduled sneak in stop in there. He, he he's known for that. And uh, not 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 for more. Well, you never know. You never know who might show up. Uh, right on. And also, Ham <laughs> Radio Crusader's name being Freddie Mac. What a cool name. That's a powerful name. That's <laughs> so very good. Uh, let's go next is Adam, K6ARK. How you doing, man? Is he there? I am. Sorry. Hit the wrong button there. Uh, good to hear you, Josh. Uh, good stream tonight. And a couple updates from me. I sent a box of antenna kits and mic kits off to Amazon this week, and I think they may be live now. Uh, almost 500 of those headed over to Amazon, so that should hopefully... Uh, keep them in stock for a little while. Uh, no 100 waters and no SMAs in that bunch, but all the 20 watt and uh, QRP BNC ones are in that mix, along with a bunch of mics. So hopefully that will uh, fill some some people's carts and get them what they need to to build. And then beyond that, I, I got out today for a nice summits on the air activation of Mount Baden Powell. Went up with a few mountain rescue friends and. Uh, did a little uh, ski excursion up there. Got some good backcountry skiing in today up on Baden Powell. Ran the KH1 on 15 meters for, I don't know, maybe just like 15 minutes or so from the summit and got probably a dozen or so contacts and had a blast up there. It was pretty good. So KH1, you're a big fan? Continue to be a big fan? I, I, I am a fan. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, I think... Uh, I used just the whip today and uh, just, you know, kind of stood there and operated <laughs> with the uh, the camera sitting on my, my ski pole and, and the KH1 with the whip and a, a short uh, counterpoise. But uh, honestly, I think I'll be running it with a, a wire antenna a little more often than that, um, just for uh, for a little better performance. But that said, I worked all across the U.S. on, on 15 meters, uh, you know, from... Northern California to New York in the log today. Nice. Uh, no, no DX, but uh, but yeah, it was it was it was good, good band conditions, and the the whip got the job done. I'm always happy if I can get to the East Coast if I'm doing like a soda. So that's oh, yeah. But you're also doing CW, so you can reach a little bit further than I normally do. But right on, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, let's see. Next is Shane. And yeah, Shane, let's give a shout out to Shane. So Shane, uh, I've known Shane for a number of years, and uh, he is our, I, I would say, probably our Motorola guy. I, I think the, the most active Motorola guy. By the way, if, if you see Shane in the chat, make sure you message him if you have Motorola questions. If he's got the time, he'll, he'll pick it up. But uh, Shane is going to come out to my place tomorrow. And we're gonna we're gonna get my uh, my F one fifty Lightning on the air on HF, which I'm very excited about. And so there's a number of people who questioned: Is does the does the Lightning put out a lot of RFI? Is it gonna be a problem? We're gonna find out. To be honest with you, I have I have used HF in the Lightning when it's parked, just on. But the the criticality of EVs is not when it's parked. That's not a problem. That's just chilling. Yeah, it's just chilling. It's when you are returning power via uh, the regenerative braking into the, the drive battery. That's when you pick up RFI generally. With that said, Ford, I, I, I got some confidence here. By the way, I was, I, I was a Ford guy at, the, at my first car. My first car was a 67 Mustang. And now my, more, my most recent car is the, the Ford Lightning. I do have a lot of respect for the F-150 in that you got to think that's a vehicle that's been deployed in many different situations, RFI troubled, it, it's shielded, I expect good shielding, I expect a lot of things, we're going to test it. We're going to test it via this install that I'm doing with Shane tomorrow. So how you doing, man? Good to hear from you. Oh, maybe not. Shane might be gone. It's okay. Uh, don't worry though, you're going to hear all about it on a video because I will be shooting every little bit of this. 
because I think there is a fundamental part of this whole install that's going to be a nightmare where you get the coax into the cab. There's like no space. I have fish tape. I got a, a ton of stuff. Uh, I'm going to explore all the spaces with Shane, but I'm I'm worried. I'm worried. We'll we'll get for, through it. And if we get through it, don't worry, it'll be on video. So Lou, hiking in Hammond is next. How's it going, man? I think he's left the chat, Josh. Lou has left the chat. All right, then we're going to Mark. Updates on the Boondock Gecko, man. How's it going? Good. I'll keep it short. I've got uh, something in my throat. Oh, man, me. everybody's sick tonight. <laughs> How you doing? Are you all right? You good? Yeah, I'm going to go to bed after this. I all just right. wanted to hang out. But well, we finished you. the campaign. We raised about twenty four grand. Crowd supply is going to double our order, so we'll end up ordering about 250 of these things. So if you haven't got one yet, you can still get one. <clears throat> and we keep adding features, and uh, I'll have to make some videos to show them all off. But it's uh, it's going well, and a lot of that's thanks to you and uh, Gabe Emerson of, uh, oh gosh, I forget his channel. But just giving us super valuable feedback on the device is uh, is really you helped guide us, so I appreciate it. Well, all right, man. I, I appreciate you. Thanks so much for everything. Um, let me let me take a quick break here. So we we've got a, a comment from uh, Europa Chronicles, and I'm sorry if I'm getting to this a little late. Josh, no luck with Discord audio. Thanks for everything you do. I'm about to build a linked 20, 30, 40, 60, 75, and 80 meter linked dipole with a one to one balance, similar to the N9 SAB, which I have on order. I have a stick to 30. Any thoughts or tips? Uh, so I'll probably go to Adam for some of this, but I think the way you want to go about this is that you tune for the highest band or lowest frequency first. Um, but how do you deal with all those linked connections, Adam, if you were ever going to build something like this? You, you want to tune for the highest band, highest frequency first. Oh, highest. So, so the other so way. Like, uh, oh, I was wrong. I was totally backwards. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the correction. No, you you want to start with the the shortest piece of wire, right? Because okay. if you think about it, if you build an eighty meter dipole, and then you got to figure out where to put links, then you have to start measuring and cutting and hoping you cut in the oh, right place. Right, but, because then you're always adding parts to it instead of start. I yeah. see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. I got right. it. I got it. So, yeah. So yeah, I, I would start at the um, at the highest band, you know, the highest frequency, highest band, and work, you know, tune band, then add your links, uh, and then add some more wire, uh, tune the next band, add a link, add some more uh, wire, yeah. tune that band, and so on and so forth. And then the the other really critical thing I would say is um, tune it the way you're going to use it. If you're going to use it with a certain piece of coax and no choke at the feed point, no one-to-one -one balance or common mode choke at the feed point, which I don't recommend. I, I would recommend building a one-to-one -one and putting it at the feed point so you isolate the antenna from your coax and don't have your coax interacting with your antenna system. Um, set it up and tune it at the height and in with the same connecting equipment that you're going to use it and you'll have uh, the most consistent and best results in the end there you go all right well definitely do what adam says <laughs> i don't build link dipoles normally so yeah that that actually makes a lot of sense now that he says that so you're cutting the wire for 20 meters for instance is going to be your lowest band in this case and then you're just going to add a segment and then add a segment and add a segment on both sides and go down the line like that. Makes perfect sense. Uh, as far as how you put it all together and, and all that stuff, yeah, you use all the parts you're going to use because the coax is going to be a part of that to a degree. But if you're choking it, you said you had a one-to-one -one balance. So oh, that'll probably help you out. Right on. So I hope that helped. Okay, very good. What's uh, We did get a – oh, we got a super chat from Mitchell Pilot. Where is it? There it is. Got a little working out pair there. Keep it up. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. We will. All right. Next, uh, Ham Radio Hobby with N3PEM. How you doing, man? Oh, you haven't followed my updates. He's out of the chat, too. That's okay. It, it, it's all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll just work through it. And then James, Quirky QRP, my man. How you doing? Hey, Josh. I'm doing good. How are you? 
Good, man. And uh, what's been up with you? Uh, yeah, you know, I haven't been in the after chat in a while. I've been busy. Um, I got myself a X6100 finally, <laughs> the last guy to get one uh, for like 300 right, right bucks. Right before the new one comes out, right? Right. Well, that's what I was kind of waiting for. I mean, I've got a KX2, so I felt kind of comfortable with what I had. Yeah. Um, but I did want to do a shout out to uh, Adam K six ARK because I got his uh, the QRP version of his antenna kit for Christmas, and I'm looking forward to building it. it. Looks really, really high quality parts. So that that's really cool. Right on. Right on. Um, awesome. Thank you. I, if you run into any issues as you're building, reach out, and uh, happy to help. And uh, just make sure you follow the the written directions on the website really well. They're they're a little bit different than the video I made a while back. So so make sure you look at the the written directions. They've evolved and, and improved over time as well so that should that should point you in the right direction cool thanks adam awesome hey, um, i've been tinkering with uh, the eight fives oh go ahead oh sorry about that i didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you i just wanted to no tell worries. you that my my fiance got me the uh antenna trolley for was it for christmas oh, oh. Yeah, for christmas. <laughs> now remember that thing's only rated for like uh a few rpms don't go spinning that thing too crazy <laughs> yeah, and, I just wanted to say thank, thank you, man. It's a good product. Mine's mad oh, top heavy with all the signal stuff, signal sticks crammed into it. But uh, yes, yes, go slow, go slow. Maybe go, that's an update. I'll have to add some like lead to the base or something. Yeah, don't explore, little... don't explore the space for RPMs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should put that uh, a disclaimer on there. Perhaps you need uh, to add a, uh, perhaps you need to add a USB powered motor to it. You know. <laughs> Just perfect. Oh God! Don't tempt me. I could. I could do that. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Maybe I'll do that just just to show a fail video. There you go. Uh, let's see. I've been tinkering with the uh, firmware on the UK. What is it? The the Kuangsheng. Having fun with that. Um, I got. I'm gonna dip my toe into the mesh tastic world. Uh, coming up here. Finally, again, late to the game. Um, but doing it in kind of an interesting way, I'm, I found a, a way to basically get into mesh tastic for like six bucks a radio. Oh, wow. So that should be interesting. Okay. Uh, I guess I could, they're all going to sell out now when I say this, I know it. Yeah. Um, oh, now on, so on the, my stream. Yeah. <laughs> you... Well, also because like, I don't know if they make them anymore. That's the other thing. Drop so the they're link. not made drop, for drop mesh tastic. Drop the link. Okay. Drop oh God. Here I go. Link. Drop the link. So, um, it's called the Chatter 2.0. It's not Meshtastic, but it's like a STEM learning tool from Circuit Mess, and you can flash the firmware. And someone on, I think it was GitHub, figured out how, I was probably like a 12-year-old figured it out, um, how to flash it for Meshtastic. And I think it has to work in slow mode, but mm -hmm. it will work. And you can get like a two pack. Oh, but I think it, uh, wait, I bought it, a two pack for work, 12 bucks. Will it work long, long slow? I haven't even tried it yet, so um, you'll have to. We'll have to do some digging. Uh, the, there's some info on GitHub. I don't have the link on me right now, but yeah, it's called the Chatter 2.0. If you look up that on GitHub, you should be able to find uh, the source information well, on it. I'm just gonna pull this off of the main screen for a second because I'm gonna buy all this right now. But I mean, they're hilarious little devices with a built-in keyboard. Like, so it's a standalone unit, right? And it's Which, all 915. My... Is it all uh, US? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna buy these. Right Believe now. so. I gotta buy yeah. these before I drop the link. Hold on. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> well, there. I, you help me spend money. I help you spend money. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 <laughs> At I, least I this is cheap. Right <laughs> Look on eBay and maybe Amazon. I think it was eBay. Like they can go for super cheap now. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. I got a two pack for twelve bucks. So like I got individual units for six dollars. Oh okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So that, that's another thing I'm tinkering with. Um, I was a couple months ago planning on releasing uh, following in your footsteps because I think you were the first ham to like market coffee that's ham radio branded. And <laughs> like back in January, and then yeah. you stopped doing it. I, and I bought. A few oh, no, 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 no. We've we, we, we got a, we got a month. We got a, a coffee of the month club coming. Oh, sweet. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say you should start doing that again because uh, we, we're, do cool. we're, 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 we're doing it. We're doing it. There is so much work on the back end that Leia is working with to get this coffee of the month club going. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, I got news for you. 
Yes. Copying him, Radio's beat you to it again. They uh, just released. Well, they didn't uh, beat me to it. I was already doing coffee before that. No, Josh was doing coffee like, what, almost six years ago. Yeah. The the re release of it. The re release of it. Uh, I don't care. But they didn't that's beat what me I was going to say. <laughs> I was planning on doing something a couple months ago. My supplier, the whole plan kind of like fell through and has been massively delayed. And so Coffee and Ham Radio beat me to it. <laughs> but Josh beat us all to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I good luck to them. I'm happy that they're out there doing it, too. So that's that's everything new on my plate. Why is I'm having so much problem with my account right now? Uh. No, that's not. There it is. That's what I want. Okay, here we go. Jeez. What's that thing called again? Chatter 2.0? Chatter 2.0, yeah. And it, it needs to be the 2.0 model, I believe. All right. I am, I am buying that now. Oh, I can get it by Monday. Here we go. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I haven't even opened my box yet. I just got them a little while ago. It's not high on the priority to-do to list, so... Um, but it, I I couldn't pass it up when I read that the GitHub information on it. I was like, holy, holy cow, it's six right. bucks for Metric sold. All right, so I've secured mine, so I'll drop a link now. Um, so I I will figure out what the uh, I'll figure out what a three D printed case might look for this because that hey, thanks be... for that. Go ahead. Thanks for uh, mentioning that. I just bought a bunch. <laughs> oh, I knew it. They're going to sell out. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I should have yeah, bought more when I had the chance. Go ahead. Buy them because I'm dropping the link right now. Dang it. Quick, quick, James. Go buy them. James, if they sell out, I'll send you one. I bought three. Well, he already bought some, too. <laughs> I, I bought I bought two boxes here, so I'm probably okay. But, you know, if, if it works out, I mean, this this could be kind of cool to have like an ultra cheap uh, mesh-tastic device with its own screen and, and keyboard. I mean, it's like old-school text messaging, right, with with uh, the, the DTMF keypad. So, like, to hit, hit the letter C, you got to hit one button three times. Um, but for six bucks, you can't complain oh, too much. It's, it's like T9? It's T9 text messaging? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. no! <laughs> I'm going to give this to my kid. So my kid's like, Dad, like, if I had a mesh-tastic device, I could potentially text you from, like, home um if like i need you to come pick me up from school or whatever i'm like yeah buddy you could do that he's like so yeah why don't you give me that cool little mesh tastic t deck that you got and i'm like i could do that and he was like yeah that'd be awesome and I'm like uh now i'm gonna give this t9 one. i was like here you go son welcome to the world i grew up in here you go that was that was totally my plan josh i'm like i'm gonna raise my kids the way i was raised t we're not t9. gonna have full court t9 keyboards. no way t9 <laughs> live with it now you know my pain I like it. Very good. Well, thank you for that. We'll get those tuned. Oh, my God. 30 meters is absolutely insane right now, guys. Get on 30 meters. This is crazy. Okay, South Africa. Yeah, dude. It's, it, it's crazy right now. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Who's next? Who's next on the on the list here? Hold on. Go down. Uh, did we get Oh, Chase is here. Chase, what's going on, man? Oh, see? Even when he's last, he's not. There first. we go. Oh, we got it. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're I'll, ready, always, dude. I can never get the damn PTD to work. <laughs> Even if you're last. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Well, uh, not a whole lot new other than I passed my uh, extra exam uh, on, I think it was Wednesday. Congratulations, buddy. Finally. Good job. Yeah, good job. It took me two tries to do it. I think I tested the first time on Tuesday or Monday, and I failed it. The first time, like by I think two points, and then I ended up passing it. Like, I want to say it was forty-five or forty-seven out of fifty. Okay. So yeah, uh, I put up a video on it, just kind of my thoughts on the, uh, just kind of my thoughts on the test, and just kind of like how I learned and stuff like that. Um, there was a lot of stuff on the test I thought that was pointless, but. There was some stuff on there that uh, that I'm glad I got to learn. I got to learn about Smith charts and stuff, so and antennas and coax. So there was a lot of cool stuff on the extra exam. And basically, my video was just encouraging people if you're working on getting any of your three licenses, testing for it, just uh, you know stick with it and uh, just get it done and and just get out there, enjoy the hobby, and be a good ambassador for ham radio. I love that. Great statement. Be a good ambassador and continue to grow your uh, your license level. I think that's awesome. By the way, everybody that's watching that's a technician, we love you. There's plenty of things you can do with the hobby. Continue to do that, but 
do think about your general because it really does open up the entire world like I'm doing right now. With your general, you can do what I'm doing right above my head, literally talking to other countries with your radio and your computer while you are on the after chat, hanging out with all of us. So I appreciate that. Uh, Tim, the Ham Radio Brotherhood. How's it going, man? Are you there? Maybe. Holy cow. Wait a minute. You remembered me? Uh, I had some help, but yes, I know you're a YouTuber and uh, you're you're in there, man. How's it going? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Frank. <laughs> he he understands. Oh, no. He understands. Uh, but, oh, that's great. But well, you're you're well, welcome it, here. We appreciate you. So welcome well, to the chat. You know, I I I try to come every week. Um, I've been a little sick the last few weeks and uh, haven't really participated much. But uh, and I had my I'm a cancer survivor, so I had my scans and stuff this week, and everything's good. So oh, eh, congratulations! The illness man. was. Just just a little illness. So anyway, I'm feeling better. But um, yeah, I have to get my strength up because uh, my hex beam is going to be delivered. I got my rotor and my Yesu rotor and everything came the other day. And oh, okay. just waiting for my hex beam to show up so I can do a video on how I put that up. And we built the mast and all that good stuff. So anyway, yeah, that's my project for right now. And uh, uh, now that the weather is nice out here again in South Dakota, we are in a heat wave. It it was 40 degrees today, so uh, <laughs> uh, the the <laughs> I know the uh, club got together today, and so um, a bunch of us are going to go do a poda tomorrow and head out to the lake. So anyway, other than that, everything's good. And uh, thank you, Frank. And uh, I was just sitting here relaxing. Uh, had, you had to wake me up. Thanks well, a lot, buddies. Well, you're welcome to be here. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Well, that. thank you very much. You yeah. guys have a great night. So uh, we'll we'll be listening. And I gotta, I gotta give a big shout out to Frank and and Frank, drop your YouTube channel. And I think he already did, but do it again. It's Cup it's worthy, and worthy Tim, cause. Uh, Gray Man Poda even dropped it. Good. No, but I mean, like, yeah, drop your we're, drop we're, drop your own link, Frank. Drop your own no, link, Frank. No, no, he dropped my YouTube earlier or just now. Uh, yeah. earlier. I'll drop okay. it again. Yeah, drop it again. Frank, Frank and I are uh, we're shooting for those. Uh, what, what is it? The producer credits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, so we can get, yeah. Our, get our IMDb entries. Yeah, you need. Uh, you you also need to support the podcast. That's the that's the big trick. Uh, but anyway, I'm just kidding. So Frank Frank does a service for me every week. It's it's incredibly nice that he does this. He reminds me of YouTubers that I don't necessarily know because I mean there's a, there's a lot of them out there and and they're all very worthy of your time if you've got it to take a look at what they're putting out. So Frank will send me a message saying, "Hey, there's these YouTubers in the chat if you want to mention them." Because I I know a lot of the people that like I know personally that I've met. Like I've met Gray Man, I've met K6ARK. I know a lot of these people, right? Um, but there's a, a number of up and coming YouTubers that are doing great stuff and they deserve as much as your eyeball time as you're willing to, uh, you know, share that. And so it's appreciated. We're dropping some links. Go take a look at them. They at least deserve your subscription. So if you click that button, it's free. You should do that. And I, I, I would appreciate that. So thank you for taking the time, but also thank you to Frank. So, you know, give, give Frank the nod there, give him that subscribe. He deserves it. All right, I gotta take a quick, uh, quick break here. I gotta use the restroom again, and uh, I, I would love it if we come back here and we talk about your favorite, your best ham held, ham held, ham radio handheld, and then that's where we're gonna go with that. So, all right, I will be I back. Think you know the answer for me on that, Josh. Yeah, well, we'll we'll get to you. We'll get to you, Shane. We'll get to you. Hang tight. Hang tight. <laughs> See you guys. Answer too. Uh, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. And if there's somebody with a question, dive in there with a question because we got a ton of smart people in the chat here that are, are happy to help you out. So I'll be back real soon. Go ahead. Question for Adam. There you go. I like it. K6ARK, are you still up? I am. Go for it. Okay. I watched a premiere today from the guy in Great Britain, and he was doing an auto transformer where he soldered a piece, two wires in very similar, I guess, method to the twisty method with the two wire twist for two uh, loops in our toroid for a 49 to one. Why would I do that one way versus the other? So I, I think what you're asking is, uh, 
like a bifiler winding for the primary instead of or as opposed to a tapped uh, transformer, right? That is correct because it it, it yeah. looks the same to me. They 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 act very similarly. You get minor differences in um uh, you know the 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 capacitance and inductance that's going on in the transformer i don't fully understand all the details of it but um uh depending on the the toroid mix and geometry and what you're trying to accomplish with it one may be more slightly more or less efficient than the other the difference is probably not going to be very significant assuming you you're using you know the same say 2 to 14 or 2 to 15 uh you know winding ratio um but uh but yeah i so i switched from on my older kits and older instructions i used a bifiler or try i'm sorry bifiler winding for for three i think typically three turns on the qrp kits and and um uh, I use two primary turns on the 100 watt kits because I found that to be um, uh, to work a bit better with that toroid. But um, on the more recent kits, I've switched to a tapped winding. My logic on that and reasoning for that was nothing more than I think it's just a little bit easier to build um, as far as efficiency goes on on the toroids and and. Uh, a setup that I use in my kits, it doesn't really make uh, much of a difference at all efficiency wise. Nothing you're ever going to notice on the QRP and 20 watt ones. It, I think it does make a, a little bit more of a difference on the 100 watt toroid. That's kind of a funky toroid, and, and um, it, I, I suspect it may be getting close to uh, kind of a, some kind of a resonance in, in the toroid. Uh, in one of the inductors in there or something because it, it's it's a relatively non-linear response and I found that the tapped uh, auto transformer really did seem to to work notably better than than the bifiler one on that specific one have you seen the latest ape video uh no I haven't no yeah because he's well he's fooling around with different ways of doing primary and secondary windings and uh, yeah yeah go ahead well go ahead i mean there's there's nothing more to it than that he's playing around with it and trying to figure out what the what the differences are because they when they were creating their um what their well their new uh antenna um they had tried several different toroids and different types and different deals and then they came up with a specific toroid that was not the one they were expecting uh that actually ended up working the best for that particular situation so that's led him down a new rabbit hole which is what he's kind of explaining i think in the new in the new uh video because he cool. actually he right he winds the primary and then he winds a secondary or sorry sorry he winds the secondary and then he winds the primary and um, that's some old school thing that somebody named dr f-u-c-h-s and i'm not going to try to pronounce that uh, <laughs> did did some research on and he's reading some paper that the guy published in 1923 uh, which explains that particular type of uh, transformer yeah, I I I want to so so there are I, I've also seen different methods to wind um, some of the secondary turns kind of back over the primary turns and in certain uh, with certain toroids and certain setups you can uh, you can kind of cancel out some of the 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 problematic capacitance that you get between uh, the, the wires or perhaps it's leakage inductance. I, I, I'm not sure exactly the physics behind it, but um, there, there are methods of winding that can, can uh, minimize your losses by uh, providing a nice balance of the, the capacitance and inductance that, that you're creating through those windings on the toroid. And, and for every one of those, you know, for, for every, 
every toroid geometry and toroid mix and wire size you're using um th those are all different variables in those equations so uh and i don't know that that any of them are are really things you can calculate so so you kind of just have to experiment with them and measure things and then figure out what what's going to work best for for mm -hmm the the size and and frequencies and everything that you want to use yeah i have a follow-up question but i don't want to steal this this guy's particular question so go ahead yeah the reason for the question was or the reason for this guy making the toroid in the premiere this afternoon he was stacking three t40 uh 43s for 49 to 1 and I assume it's for going from 400 watts up to 1,000. I'm just going to assume for the new UK rules. Could be. Uh, you're talking about MM0 OPX, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, yeah. I, yeah. I haven't seen that, haven't okay. seen that it, one yet either. It dropped but, today. Um, oh, okay, cool. I'll, I'll have to take a look and, and, and pull it up. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Don. Sure. Yeah, and, thank you. And so here, here's my follow-up question, Adam, and I, I think I kind of stumped Ape when I was asking it. When, when you're talking about efficiency and all of that, you're talking about transmit efficiency, correct? Uh, well, it goes both, it goes both ways. Um, well, well, how do you measure it coming back? So how do you measure receive efficiency? I think the I think the efficiency, you know, the loss through the the transformer is, is I think it's it's uh, symmetric essentially, if that makes sense. I, you you lose as much going in as coming out, but but there's um, less there's less voltage coming in than there is, or it may be amperage anyway. There's less of the power coming back at you than what we push out. So if you're pushing fifteen hundred watts, you're never going to get that much back. You're getting microvolts back. So it would seem to me that microvolts would be more affected than, you know, many, many watts. No, your 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 percentage loss or dB loss is is going to be the same either direction. And mm -hmm. but the the reason that the transmit direction matters more is because the you know your 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 receiver can handle really low uh incoming voltages you mm -hmm. what matters the most is your signal to noise ratio and managing that and and if your signal and your noise are you know both attenuated by one and a half db who cares you know it's not going to make a difference to your radio um but if you're transmitting at 1500 watts you know 1.5 db that that that's a certain percentage of of your transmit power that is not insignificant and that's a decent amount of wattage that's turning to heat in your transformer that has to be dissipated. Otherwise, it overheats and and breaks down. So, 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 so you're saying that there's no way that I could affect the incoming signal uh, less than the sensitivity of my radio. I'm not anywhere in danger of that, right? I I don't think you're ever going to, um, the, the amount of loss that you're going to have through a transformer like that is so small generally, if, if it's, you know, well built and, <laughs> and decently effective, if it's, if it's useful on transmit mm -hmm. and it doesn't just turn everything to heat or waste, you know, a bunch of your, your power, um, then it's going to be plenty good on receive. It's not yeah. going to have an, any kind of noticeable impact. Yeah, because I I doubt you're losing that much or heat and that kind of stuff coming back through the transformer. Right. And, 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 the other thing is, of course, too, you're like if you look at the winds and and the way that the signals either boosted or dropped back, then on receive it's the exact opposite. So if you're boosting it on going out and you're uh, you're gonna f uh, cut it coming back, right? Right. It's, it should be should be pretty symmetric going in versus going out. And, and you know, if, if you wanted to do a little experiment, you know, most of these transformers are, um, if, you know, 2 dB or less of loss for the most part across the bands that you're using them on. Go, you know, find yourself or, or make, you know, a 2 dB attenuator and put it in line with your, your rig. Um, if you can put it on an antenna switch and switch it in and out, 
um, see how much of a difference that makes on on how you're able to hear a weak signal and uh, you're not going to really notice any kind of notable difference there well but but i've got attenuators in built into the radio right <laughs> that's right well because i mean like i can but they're usually in 10 10 and 20 db um increments so i, I kind right. of you're saying yeah because that's that's what you need to notice a you know have a noticeable difference there and, re and really make a, a difference if it's if you're just not going to signal down by you know a, a one and a half or two db your 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 gain control your rf gain or your af gain is just going to make up for that hmm. yeah unfortunately i run I, and this may be wrong but i run mine full up pretty much all the time uh, comment yeah. if it's okay yeah yeah go ahead um Oh, go ahead. No, it's a comment. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to ask, um, do you have an RF signal generator that you could use? Not really. No. I mean, I refuse okay. to buy O-scopes either. I mean, I, I just, I cannot stand those in my shack. But I don't. Why? Wait, why? What? What? I don't I, want. I'm you're allergic to, to testing Josh. equipment. What are you talking about? That's, I am. I am not going to waste the money. I'm okay. just not. Okay. So I've I've had this out with Ape and those guys. To me, you know what? You remember what Eric says, right? Don't be a scope head. I'm living that dream. I mean, don't no. He, he's he, when Eric says that he's referencing the waterfall. He's not talking well, about it. And, and I'm not, but I'm still living the dream. Okay. All right. Don's well, just going to let comment, everyone else. Don's just going to let everyone else do the uh, testing for No, him. I mean, the, the true honest answer, and y'all aren't going to really believe me here, but it's too much like what I do at work. I don't want to be around those things. Okay. Not but at no, my that, house. Honestly, that's a fair answer. That's totally fine. I get it. I get it. But yeah, you you have an allergy to uh, test equipment. I get it. Yeah. All well, right. and spending money on it too, because I really don't. I, I mean, what Jim and and Ape spend on those things, like, damn it! I oh yeah, a radio it, before it, that. Yeah, no, that that some of this stuff gets really expensive. It's insane. The the mm -hmm. spectrum analyzers in particular, you can get an O scope uh, for in it, like not much money, particularly on a ham fest. You can get an O scope for really cheap, but signal uh uh. Spectrum analyzers are really expensive. <laughs> They're really expensive. That's why the Tiny SA Ultra is such a good deal. A no right. affiliation. I make no money on recommending you get a Tiny SA Ultra. They're really, really good. They're really good. Um, all right. There was somebody that said they had a question about Hamvention. Let's take that really. F I hope this Common. is a quick one. Well, hold on. Let's take the let's take the Hamvention one real quick. Go ahead. Who had that? I thought they were on voice. If they're not on voice, type it in the chat, and I'll try and get to it. Go ahead, comment. My trick with uh, testing equipment is make friends with somebody who has the, the real expensive stuff and will let you use it. Sure, of course. This, yeah. is, this, this is one of the reasons why you join a club, right? Join a ham radio club, ask questions of people, say, hey, I want to test this stuff out. You know, can you help me out? That kind of thing. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the O-scopes we have at work are $650,000 a yeah, piece. The, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if, you get, if you get spoiled on really good equipment, it can, it can feel a little lackluster when you try and do it in the shack. That's true, too. All right, um... Yeah, the, the the other comment that I was been holding for a while was the uh, the finding the RF gremlins in the shack with the USB thing is that you can never discount that it's two things interacting with each other. I, I appreciate uh, that. More. I, I do appreciate that, but I feel like you first have to do the dragnet on the the gross offenders first. Because it's really difficult to get those compound offenders out of the way until you get the gross offenders fixed, right? And most mm -hmm. people have many RFI generators in their shack, in their shack, and in their home, all of that. Like you have to get you have to get all the superfluous noise, the simple stuff, get all that low hanging fruit out of the way first, and then start going after the deeper issues. Yeah, and I, I took my first step in that direction today, Josh. Good for you, buddy. We've we're. Don, uh, I finally, you, I finally you started are... looking for land, and I found something. Oh, my goodness. So uh, for everybody that, you know, Don, 
for the longest time, Don has some of the, the best radios, I feel, from, from my point of view. Very good radio equipment, but also is, is troubled with some of the most RFI. And he's done a, you know, he's done a job trying to, to track down and mitigate the issues, but he just lives in an area that's saturated with noise. And to be honest, everybody watching, there is a certain point where you have to like say, hey, I, I, maybe I just can't live in this area anymore. If you're that passionate about radio, um, going and knocking on every neighbor's doors and asking them about all their noise generators is probably not feasible for most people. And so some hams just got to say, hey, we got to we just got to move. Or I have a they question get about really that. active in POTA. <laughs> I I have a question about that when when we can get to it. So go ahead. Okay, well let let's go back to Don. So Don, do you want to add anything to that, and then we'll go to Shane, and then we'll. Move no, on. I the the thing is, I mean, this is the first freaking day that I looked, and I spent like two hours or so talking to the real estate lady, uh, and and we went over all of these places all around Dallas and Fort Worth. Okay. And uh, I kind of mentioned, okay, well, I go to this park over in, you know, it's in Eustis, Texas. But anyway, it's not, to me, it's not far from the house, and it's not. But um, she she was looking around, well, let me take a look right there. And we found something that, I mean, four acres for uh, with, with a, a house on it and, and ponds and streams and it's less than anything else we saw out there. And we went out and looked at it today. It's in exceptional shape. And it has two of those, um, oh, what are the containers on it? Two of the big containers. They're not long, but they're big containers on there. Yeah, like a, like a shipping gonna, crate. She's going to leave there. Yeah, the lady's going to leave them there. Okay. And, and it's like, I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's literally too good to be true. And and it's literally a block or two from the freaking entrance to the park. Dude, that's pretty cool. I know. That 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 that's pretty awesome. And your Hamvention question was dark forty five in the YouTube chat. Uh okay. What is it? Do you have it? Just go ahead and say it. Uh yeah. What is Hamvention like and is it in Ohio? <laughs> So I answered the last part first. So let me uh, let me let me pull this up here. So, what is Hamvention like? Hamvention is the biggest ham fest of the year. So let me let me pull up the. Uh... There there is no ham fest that is bigger than Dayton Hamvention. It is simultaneously the the largest gathering of hams, but is also one of the best for talks. Now, now with the talks, it's going to be some surface level. You're going to get a lot of surface level stuff. If you're a beginner, uh, talks are going to be one of the things you should probably dive into if you go to Hamvention. There's a lot of deep divey stuff too, but just keep that in mind. That's my point of view. It has the biggest floor, if you will, of the, the major brands that come out. And it is oftentimes where brands will introduce new radios. They introduce them at Hamvention. And historically, that has always been the case. Uh, COVID created some issues where it, it caused problems where there was a, you know, we didn't do it for one year. Uh, and then, you know, the, the brands are like, should we go back and all that stuff? But good news is everybody's back. It's it's full on. Everybody's back in. Um the swap meets are amazing. It's it's probably the largest swap meet place you can go for ham radio. So if you are not adjacent to Ohio, you might be able to not fly some of that good stuff back home to you. Aim for some small stuff. I, I don't know what to say. If you if you if you wanted the epitome of a ham radio like convention experience, hamvention is probably it. It is the it is the biggest one. It's got the most going on. Um, it definitely has the biggest after hours, quote unquote, hangout time. The the YouTubers, we do a kind of a party night on Saturday at the Troll Pub, uh, which is outside of Xenia. And we hang out every night, pretty much that we're there, we're doing something. Uh, you have the Contest University with, uh, oh gosh, there's... There's so oh god, there's so much stuff going on. Uh, Contest University is a four big, days in May. Four days in May, which is the QRP uh, kit building. <coughs> there, there is like 
so much to do that I'm just trying to rattle off the top of my head. You, you, you should, if, if you have to do like the epitome, like pick one of the highest ham fests, I would say you would have to put Hamvention on that list. From my point of view, you you would do you would do Hamvention would be the first one that you would go to, um, and then I would probably do Orlando next, and then Huntsville. And actually, those could be switched. Uh, Huntsville is like a much lower key one weekend show, really simple, very friendly. You can talk to everybody in a weekend and get on your business. The good thing about Huntsville though is um, lots of YouTuber involvement. They get started way early. And they're hanging out at the pavilion at the campsite, and it's just lots of portable amateur radio. So if you're really into portable amateur radio, Huntsville might be the better spot than Orlando. Um, but Hamvention is is my is my number one. Recommend you go. If Huntsville you get... Huntsville is a really great camaraderie. I can I can say that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, there is it's it's crazy. It's it's like. It's the primetime show. There's no show that's bigger. International or otherwise, it's the biggest show, period. And I also know I also know we uh, got to get to Shane. But there was a, another YouTube question from CCKL4LU. Anyone have a tri-band recommendation HT IP67 and a real 10-watt radio that's worth anything? Uh, they're... Uh, thinking that the UVK5 that would meet that spec is probably five years out at the rate of the manufacturer's uh, processing, I guess. So anyone have a good tri-band recommendation, HT? Which ten, three bands? But he said 10 watts. There's very few handhelds that do 10 watts already, so that we have to yeah. lower that. Um, and it, what's the advantage even to 10 watts over five? It, it There isn't much. Like, there's a half a, yeah, I, half an S unit. Yeah, I, and half an S unit doesn't mean a lot. So, I mean, the point is that maybe he should look at 5-watt radios. Well, no, I think James already nailed it. James Hannibal already got it. It's uh, the Wushan KG Q10H is probably the most current-gen tri-band radio that has an IP rating of any appreciation. The only downside is that – so straight up, if you're doing a tri-band radio – you're probably going to get two meters and 70 centimeters is going to be really good, but uh, 1.25 meters is probably not going to give you the same power output. That's a quad band radio, so that also does six meters, which is a little bit lower too on power output. But it, again, th there is there is not a ton of stuff in the market that is tri band or quad band that is worth mentioning. There are some that do it, including the Baofeng, but they're they're they all have the same issues right they all have the same issues at the end of the day from my point of view i'd go with the whoosh on if you can if you can scratch it if you got the and the e75 is not ip uh, uh it, it has an ip rating i just don't remember what it, well uh don don didn't have it on him if somebody wants to look it up and drop it in the chat we'll we'll mention it but um uh, it has an ip rating of course it it'll handle a splash, or if you dropped it in a puddle and you pick it up, you're you're fine. Yeah, I I found it. It's IP fifty four. Is the VX six still manufactured? Yes. Yes. Am I here? Am I making it? Am I making it? Yes, I went, I went to the it. beer fridge. Yes. <laughs> the so. If if you have to have out, huh? if you have to if you have to have a fully submersible radio, uh, there are a couple of options that exist on the market, and the VX6 is the one that I have thrown into a pool, dived in, grabbed it, and then started PTTing immediately on it. So yeah. and it was fine. I PTTed it underwater. And James says the KGQ10H is IP67 rated. I have not tested that though. So I, I I believe it I believe it but I have not I have not thrown in a pool. But yes, I did that for the VX6. It was I have put it in a number of my videos. All right. So come in a minute. I just want to make a shout out. Go ahead, Mike. Go with a shout out. Uh, and a question, but the shout out. Oh, is you're adding to... too much to this. I'm just. <laughs> well, no, it's only a little one, but it's a personal question to your, you. Your 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 voice won't hold out. I'm just kidding. Go ahead, but. But Go no, uh, the the European ham radio show, 
had a had a show with N nine S A P. Okay. And I won the aerial from them. Okay. And the poor bloke, I picked the uh, 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 the uh, the the um, off center fed dipo, and he duly sent it to me, and it's arrived here. But I was flabbergasted about the aerial was seventy nine bucks. Okay. okay. The postage was forty nine. Yeah, dude. So I want to make a shout out that this guy goes above beyond. And very thank you to the European ham guys, which are free Norwegian and a German who regularly do thing on YouTube. Um, but also, I know you have one of those antennas. Which one was it? N9TAX, that one? N9SAB. Uh, oh, okay. And I know you have one, although it was a long time ago I saw it on one of your videos. I don't know that. I think I it's a dipole or something, but it's one. Well, it, Jason has a video. I on don't it. have one of these. I nope, think it was a long time ago. No, but um, oh, well, it, never it was ever. Jason. But yeah, but I'm Jason happy. I'm happy to share. Ago. I'm happy to share it. So yeah, I I don't have this one, um, but I'm happy to share uh, the information on this because it it looks good. It looks good. Yeah, I'm sure. But mind anyway, I wanted to just shout out that the guy made went above and beyond, and uh, you know should should have a good mention. Um, because, like I said, the postage from America for a six-ounce antenna was stupid. I just dropped Jason's video link for that antenna review. So here is a, uh, let's see. So this is a 100-watt linked N-fed half-wave 40 through 10. So that's one of the options. He has a mini G5RV, which that's kind of wild, a mini G5RV that's like foldable like that's pretty crazy. 2017, 15, 2010, or 1210. So you have to probably put a tuner on that. A 100 watt HF dipole. So let's click on this guy. Um, I don't know what bands this is. Let's pull up the whole thing. HF dipole, portable stealth ham radio. Yeah, you just pick what frequency you want it on. Oh, I see. So it, it is a mono band. In, oh, in I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 40, 20 is out of stock, 15. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I like the. To be honest, I'm a big fan of heat shrink. <laughs> Loaded up. I, did Mike do a review of that one? I can't remember. Uh, Jason did, and I dropped it. In well, the, I know uh, that. I know Jason up. did, but I thought Mike had one of these too. So I th think Mike did do a review on that antenna. It looks familiar. So this this is probably the way I would go: is get yourself the off center fed, right? And yeah, then you... I, I went with the stealth version, which was like uh, the QRP version of that. Sure. But even even at 100 watts, this is a pretty small uh, little unit to put up on the air. Off-center fed, so it's multi-band capable, 40 through 6. That's pretty good. Yeah, you, that's that's a pretty cool. Look at that. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's why you deserve to shout out for being such a nice, a nice gentleman. Well, he deserves a shout out for that. That's true. Right on. Okay, cool. All right, so here's what I go ahead. Are you good? Or oh, I was just going to say he should be, he should appreciate the fact that uh, Mike spent most of his voice tonight giving him a shout out. He did. He did. All right, so here's what I want to do. I want to ask you guys what is your favorite ham radio handheld, or what you think the best is. That that could be different. Your favorite might not be the best, and your best might not be your favorite. Right. So uh, let's who who wants to be the first to chime in with their Best ham radio handheld. Go ahead. I'll take it. Ah, Frank wants to break the ice. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to ice break every time I can. No, it's fine, um, man. Go for it. Shane will probably agree with me. Motorola XTS five thousand. And don't forget, Shane did have a question. Oh yes. Um. Okay. So XTS five thousand. So I will, I will take a pause. Everybody keep keep the momentum. Don't let it die. Think about your answer. Shane, what was your question? I, this guy's killing me over here. <laughs> that was uh, my fault. So my, I start I I moved on without getting your question, but go ahead. No worries, man. Yeah, that's you know, you 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 keep turning that can opener, it's eventually lids get eventually gonna pop. <laughs> anyway, um I've been dealing with the same issue that Dawn was de has been dealing with was when it comes to noise but i don't really have that option to move because it's expensive as hell around yeah. here yeah. Um, 
So I'm trying to figure out a solution to reduce uh, my noise floor or perhaps re lower my noise floor a just a little bit, if possible. Comment? Well, so huh? let, before the comment, let me just dive in and say, did you do the whole power out, shut everything down, circuit by circuit, go back online? So, yeah, so I've done that because I have a separate little house in the back. And my roommate lives in another little house that's kind of in the middle of the property. It's one of those really long properties that goes way far back from the street. Okay. And his house has dimmers in in there in his house, and uh, I don't know if that's the actual issue. Um, it's it's the Apollo NFET half wave, and I have it configured as an inverted V. Well, hold on, hold on. Um, Before we start, I get a lot of details here. Did you shut the power off? of everything you have control of, including the outhouse. Shut it all down. In my house, yes. But you you told me about an outbuilding, right? No, no. Okay. So I have my own little it's a little like a little guest house or whatever it's called. That has its own uh, We call that the mother in law breaker. home in Southern California. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it has its own set of circuit breakers, which I've already went, gone through. And then my roommate has. His well, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Okay. Right. So, I, I, I'm, I'm just. It's a yes or no thing. Did you, did you, do you have the capability to shut everything off on your property? Yes or no. Do I have the capability? Yeah. Um I would. I wouldn't say so. Why not? I don't want to start setting things off on my roommate while he's, you know, well, that's he's a saying. gamer. So. Well, so you got to coordinate with him and shut everything off. Shut it all off. It's yeah. all got to get shut off. Because if you don't do that, right, if you don't do that, then you don't know what your baseline is, right? So everybody mm -hmm. with RFI, here, here's your fundamental issue you have to do. You go to your radio when everything's on and you note the signal, what the signal is strength is right of your noise floor not when someone's talking but the noise floor right tuned to a empty spot of the band what are you an s5 s6 you know whatever then you go shut everything off shut it all down go back to your radio the noise has probably gone down it could be significantly down and then you have to go through the process of turning on a breaker at a time until you find out what the offending thing is. You have to do that, otherwise, we, we you you can't even we can't even start having this conversation, right? Because you you have to mitigate all the noise generators in your control. And yes, your roommate is technically in your control because you can you can just have come on, you you can talk to your buddy. You can be like, hey man, I, I want to work with you on this one. It doesn't affect you. You don't give a shit about any of this. But I've got a big problem with blank. Your touch lamp. Your blah blah blah. I will replace this thing, but I I need to do this. Like I I I can't. As much as you love video games and your gaming, I love radio. Let me help. You know, help help me help myself. I will pay to replace whatever it is. But we gotta we gotta get this thing out of here. It's a noise generator, right? That kind of thing. And you just gotta have that discussion with them, and and if you and if you tell them it's like, hey man, I gotta shut the power down for like an hour to go sort all this out. Um, that's just that's just what you gotta do. That's just what you gotta do. From my point of view, I think that's what what has to happen. Okay. I've got a question for him. Well, hold for on. Me? Let's get, let's have him come back. Let, so, I mean, is that something you can do? Yeah, I, I can work that out. Yeah, I I, I think you got to get the baseline first. Because it, it's entirely possible, and see, this is this is one of those things. It's 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 only it's only once you shut it all down that you can truly hear what your radio sounds like. Shut it all down, get the baseline, then turn all your crap back on. Is the baseline pretty close? Okay, we can work with that. But and then if you turn your buddy back on and the you know the 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 noise floor goes through the roof. Well, then I think we found where the problem might be, and the problem might be in your own your own building, which is good. Then you don't have to mess with your buddy. You turn him back on; he's out of the mix now. But you you can't you can't start having these conversations until you do that experiment. Process and shout, 
right and show it to him as you're doing it be like hey this is what my this is what i'm looking at right now let me go shut everything off this is what it looks like now it may irritate them or whatever but show them that way they have a generic understanding of what you're trying to do as well instead of oh hey i'm trying to replace all this yeah, just just explain like instead of gaming on the internet, like on servers and stuff like that, you're gaming on the the atmosphere. And if he has a, an electronic device that is creating interference in that close atmosphere, very close to your radio, then he's disturbing your ability to game appropriately on radio. That's literally what it is. Like it, it's 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 a problem. Nice reference, right? Uh, well, as a ga as someone who is a proper gamer at one point in their life, uh, yes, I, I definitely get the references. It's like it's yeah. like setting your ping to like two hundred and like now I'm gonna go compete on an epic level. You cannot do that. You can't. It, you're, you're not. Josh was a gamer. Yeah, I was. I was world ranked before there was Twitch. Oh man. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was hardcore. <laughs> I was. Jo Jody just dropped the best meme ever for this. Nice. I, I hate, I hate, uh, I'm not a big fan of Big Bang Theory. I, I don't like Big what? Bang Theory. No, I don't like Big Bang Theory. I, uh, I, I know, but you, you, you gotta give it to Jody for that I one. I do, I like it, I like it, but I'm not a big fan of Big Bang Theory. About do, the do yourself, do yourself a favor. Put on Big Bang Theory and try and pretend the laugh track doesn't exist. See if you can pretend. Oh god, it's horrible. It, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Also, I, it, I it's like, it. it was, it was created... That show was created to make boomers laugh about their kids that are engineers and nerds. That's what that show was built for. It was built to help boomers identify and understand their children. And, you know, if it helps some people, great. But most of it is like, oh, my God, it's so cringy. Oh, it's so cringy. All well, right. Th thanks for your help. Back to your, uh, your topic there. Okay, let's get back into it. Who... Who wants to be next? What is the best I'll ham go. radio I'll handheld? Go. I'll go. Go, oh, Gray Man's in. Go, Gray Man. Right. Go. I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to set the chat on fire. The best handheld radio, yes, by far, is the Bofang UV5R. Oh and no! And the reason I say that is because that has brought every one of us that radio. And if you said you didn't own one, I'm going to call you a liar. Uh, every one of us has owned that radio, and that has brought us all together, and oh. has brought our our Jim, hobby back like, together. I, I would Jim have been here. I will never own that. Oh, yeah, everybody's screaming yeah, right now. Uh, several people typing with voice. Uh, I have yeah, owned yeah, yeah. the UV five R well after I got licensed, and I came to this hobby before the UV five R. And no, I wouldn't say it's the best hit radio handheld. But it did bring oh, a lot no, of people no, to the, the hobby, the, so that's true. That's the, true. I can't and, take and, that away. And that's the reality. They they are they're they're a dime a dozen. You can throw them in the trash, but it was a, a lot of people's very first radio, and it brought that barrier of entry in. And I, I tell you what, I bought mine two weeks, two weeks, and I was off buying something else. But that's that's what it took to 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 get me over that thing of saying, hey, you know what, I can really enjoy this hobby. Is that so? Um, when were you licensed, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 2015. Okay, 2014, so that, 2015, that's when like Balfang's that. like hit the hit the streets, basically. So that was like probably yeah. one of your first mm -hmm. radios was the Balfang. That that was my very first radio. That's what actually kind of you know it made me think to myself, all right, I you know if I don't like it, I'm not out a bunch of money. Yeah, and to be honest with you, like I, I mentioned, like oh, I was there before you got licensed, but that that's not the right answer. The right answer is like if if, if you fast forward and I was at the same time you were a, a new ham, my first radio probably would have also been a Baofeng. So I, I I appreciate the comment. I don't think it's the best handheld, but I definitely mm -hmm. think it is the it is a, one of the best gateways into ham radio. That's true. It's a drug. <laughs> yeah, get it right into. My, can I put a handheld into my veins? How do I get a handheld into my veins? Now I will say this: uh, yeah. looping back to my radio, the SCS five thousand. Yeah, I'll say that for you know those of us who are a little more advanced with the radios. If I were to get, you know, if, if you were to say, "Hey Frank, what radio would you suggest?" Just 
in the ham radio world. Yesu VX7R. It is wonderful radio, easy to do. It was, I'm not going to call it the Baofeng of Yesu, but it was the cheap, easy, ready to get into the hobby handheld radio for the longest time. And that would be the radio I'd tell people to get. Even today, I'd be like, get a used one, easy to program, a quad band, you know, wonderful radio. And as far as, and Tim, as far as the Belfings go, never owned one, just like everybody else, never owned one, have worked with them multiple times. I can go next. All right, who wants to go next? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh this is Josh here, WX7JM. And right, when Josh. I started this hobby, um, I started this hobby in 2014. And when my Elmer was working with me, you know, he wanted me to get into the hobby as best as possible. And, you know, it all depends on your budget uh, when you first start. Well, radios you really want. Yep. And I told him I wanted a reliable, rugged radio. And he said, well, at the market right now, you can get these options. You know, he gave me an expensive one, a medium one, and a cheap one. I told him, well, I mean, I want to be able to still work with it. And it works for, for years to come. And I picked up the FT60R. That's mine. That was my first ever radio, Yesu. And uh, I loved it. It's, I mean, yeah, dual band only, but it's, it was rugged, easy to program. And I got everywhere with it. I used to even run nets with it because uh, I, ha I had a way of doing that. And it was really crazy. It was really, it was really innovative for me. You know, it got me into the hobby. I loved the radio. It felt rugged. It felt strong. It felt like it felt like a Nokia phone from back in the day. But other than that, that's, that, that's basically where I started. And I've known people who've gotten bad fangs and all that, and they've had a lot of issues. Some people never have issues. I just never owned a bow fang. I don't mind bow fangs. I don't recommend them, but I don't mind people who get them. I get it. They're like kind of like a throwaway phone in a sense. You know, they're cheap burner stuff, but it gets people out there. Yeah, cool. But for me, I always recommend the FT60R just because it's the mid-range it's not it's not it's not very cheap but it's not very expensive either so but it does what it needs to do and it does great things so that's my answer good answer i i, I that was my first radio uh but i i don't know that i would say it was my best handheld ham radio so it was the only handheld i've owned so that's why i'm saying oh you, well you started off on a good footing then so good for you all right who's next who wants to dive in i second that Oh, James is it, James. Has, well, okay, we got a second now. All right, very good. Who's next? Who wants to dive in? Well, I, my, go ahead. I will say that my all time best favorite radio is the D72. And it does APRS, it does all the things. It has a good receiver and full duplex for the win. Yeah, I, I on the short list of radios that I would say is my favorite ham radio handheld, it is the D72 because of the full duplex and APRS uh, and the full TNC. But there's more. There's more. So who, who, wants to, who wants to add to that? Go ahead, Don. Well, I mean, my everyday carry, the, the one out of all these handhelds that I really should have known um, that I have, uh, the Wushan 8H to me is just the right feel and weight and uh just works the way i want it to um so that's my favorite ht but i just have this thing about and I, and it happened to us again this week some poor guy stand brand new ham standing out in his backyard can't check in the damn net because he's been sold a damn uh qrp radio and everybody thinks these things are wonderful. I just, wait, wait, wait. wait me, you, a the handheld. handhelds are Q, handhelds are QRP. Oh, that's when, true. That's true. Yeah. 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 And and so many people buy them, and I I feel the problem is for me I feel so bad because this guy's new. He wants to get in. He's wanting to check into our net and, and have a, a brief over on the net, and he just can't get there because he's he he's running a handheld. And, and he's just too far out. I mean, yeah. he, this guy wasn't all that far, but just uh, we, we couldn't. We, we, we tried and tried and tried, and we just could not hear him. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. All right, who wants to be next? 
who wants I can't to... believe nobody has mentioned oh. the uh, best radio that came out of China, the Anytone 878. I was waiting for the 878 to, to rear its head. Not ugly head, just rear its head. It's a good radio. Yeah. I still have the Gen 1. That thing's freaking awesome, dude. It's good. It, it's uh, actually a... It's actually a really solid analog performer too. If you program oh, I it, use mine yeah. on analog. Comment. Go ahead, comment. So I, I was gonna chime in and say the eight seven eight uh, because I have one, but I also have the BTEC the BTEC six X two DMR the non pro, and I've been running that twenty four seven three sixty five for just about a year um, with my fire department. Um, it's a part 90 radio, uh, and it outperforms the Kenwoods and the Motorola's and everything that everybody else has on our, I think we're a 62 agency dispatch center. So that's pretty yeah, good. I've never so, had any issues. So let me ask you, what's your testing that you qualify that as being better than the other ones? How do you qualify that? Oh, it's qualitative, not quantitative. Um, there's a, uh, okay broadcastify stream and listening to other transmissions on the stream so uh, audio mine versus others but yeah. you, you could be closer uh, to the central hub though that's transmitting hypothetically um, yeah it's a linked repeater system um okay. that i don't entirely understand exactly how it works i think it's a voting system um and I'm often much closer to an antenna um, sure. than other uh, than other units. Um, but there are times where I'll be right next to somebody else with their, you know, Kenwood or Motorola, and they're not getting through. Is the eight seven eight uh, intrinsically safe though? Like, is it rated for public safety? No, uh, I'm on the EMS side of the fire department, so I'm not going into a burning building with a non-intrinsically safe radio. He, his, that his, is yeah. not. And I those don't are, know if you have to have a... Those are separate um, class of, or, uh, qualif certifications, too. Intrinsically safe is not uh, required for Part 90. I so. do think for fire department, it has to be NFPA 1802, though. It does. Right, but that's not the same as Part 90. Part 90 is, is yeah. just for commercial. So. But also, that's no, not just, required for ham radio. <laughs> I was just inquiring, since he said it was for public safety, I was wondering if his oh, fire gotcha. department was using it. Gotcha. Right no, they're using they're using Motorola's and Kenwood's. Um, then I don't think those the Motorola's that we have are intrinsically safe either. Um but Which I'm also not on the fire side, so uh, you, you, stand by one. Them, them fighting words that you just laid out. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you got yeah, a ton yeah, of yeah. people that are, what did you say? They're not intrinsically yeah. capable. <laughs> you, you, I don't, you, you got at least two commercial guys in here. <laughs> I don't I don't think you have to have intrinsically safe unless you're doing, like, hazmat work, though. And if Motorola is it, then it's like, who is? It, the hazmat stuff is like our fuel barn and stuff in the Air Force side. And, uh, yeah, you have to have intrinsically safe to go in there and the uh, paint barn. And what do you take, Motorola? Yeah, they're Motorola yeah, only at, yeah. at uh, the base. It's got to have that green dot, that little green. It means it won't blow yeah. you up real good. Yeah, Shane, not everybody knows about the green dot, though. All right. I know that. Who, who's next? Who so wants to add their thoughts? In in checking, uh, they are HT twelve fifties, and I don't know oh. if they're the IS version. Oh, okay. oh. oh my lord! Oh no, not twelve fifties. I okay. know, I know. <laughs> we just had to mention. We don't get the, the fun 50. toys. What, what, we don't what? get the fun toys. Are there are other departments with Apex eight thousands. <sighs> Shane, Shane, back me up on this one. HT twelve fifties are the Baofeng of Motorola, whereas the Apex eight thousand is the Flex and Elecraft of my M radio. Uh, I'm sorry, well, I don't know. Frank, did you, you just equate a, a Motorola to a Baofeng? Yeah, that's yeah, that's what. I yeah, yeah, Shane, don't, don't Shane. you agree with that? Frank said that. The yeah, CP two hundred. Is the Bofang of Motorola? 
I would say the HT 1250 is, uh, I don't know, maybe the Wuxun, but I mean, it's yeah, the okay. Wuxun from like 1996, so it's been around forever. Wuxun's fine. There's nothing. Well, I mean, okay, okay, all right. Can I all make right. it? Hold on. We're, it it's turning. It's turning into Five Guys or in and Out right now. Hold on. We gotta. We gotta get it back to. Let's add another voice. Who wants to add their favorite handheld into this discussion? Go ahead. I'll go. Uh, um, Multi, my, go ahead. My favorite HT that I've ever had, and purely for nostalgic reasons, kicking it back to Kenwood, is a THG71 that I got off of eBay back in 2010 because it was miscategorized. I got it for like 40 bucks. And it was my first radio, and that's what I learned on. I learned how to program tones in on a faceplate and get on repeaters. So, uh, good place in my heart for it. That's a good radio. Uh, the that is what kicked off the D seventy two and all the other ones on the Kenwood line. So it, it's still um, there's still people that are rocking that because I believe it still has the TNC in it. So that's a that's a pretty good radio. I agree with you. No, no, no TNC. It's a, it was 70... a th... G71. Oh, G71. Okay. Not the TH. Okay. Got it. No, it was a, it is a dual band. However, you can only listen to one channel at a time, but okay. it was a great starter radio. Gotcha. I actually still have it. Very good. All I'm right. making a nod to history. Uh, yeah. That <laughs> sounds like it. All right. Who's next? Oh, yeah, Who wants to go next? 20 plus years old at this point. Yeah. Who's next? Can I make a nod to history? Uh, yeah. If, 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 you, if you think it's the best handheld ham radio, go for it. Well, it, it was the first one that was the shape. Okay. All right. It was the first one that was totally encapsulated in the shape of the Mars bar type um, radio. It was the ICOM 2E or 2A as it was in America. Uh -huh. It was literally the handheld that was fully synthesized with a detachable battery. Uh, it was one of the first, I'm not sure if it was the first, but it was one of the first of that thing that was completely encapsulated in one radio. Before that, you you had maybe six channels or eight. This was completely synthesized for the whole two-meter band. And it lit, didn't weigh so much that you had to wear um, extra trouser supports. Let me go in the garage, and, it, and I've and got a four uh, a four a four A. Yeah, it's literally the first radio, and all it had on it was some some dip switches and a couple of other switches. But you could do everything with it, and it okay. literally is the shape of that Motorola that somebody's just posted. And without that radio, we'd still be carrying around what I call electric handbags, which is something like a, you a know, Motorola about the size bag of phone. Yeah. twice the size of a, a, a 817, but yeah. just does two yeah. meters. Yeah. So can I, can I uh, cheese it and just say an ICOM IC705? Does that count? Oh, yeah, okay, nobody, nobody, nobody disagrees not, not, with me, so it's good. Not, I'm, not unless guess. I can say KX3. <laughs> I you can handle the KX3, can't you? It has yeah, a, it has can, a microphone. I, KX2 has a microphone well, on you, it. You can also put a two meter board in it, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, two meter only, only. Wow. But, yeah. We didn't say dual band. We just said that's HT. True. That's true. Uh, I, I mean, oh, man, th this is such a, by the way, thank you everybody for indulging me on this because honestly, the, the, the truth is, is that it's, it's highly subjective. And, uh, Don actually made a really good point that the handhelds are QRP radios. They're, they're, they're low powered radios. They may have the, the hottest features that you can get in a radio, but they're super low powered versus their mobile brethren, which get you out way way further than that so it's 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 such a it's a tough question it's a tough question to answer i i like the idea of the kenwood d72 one of my favorite radios full duplex ham radio like when that came out i was like oh my gosh this is amazing there's so many things we can do with this we can do satellite contacts like really ex like get out there and do all those technician things that you want to do 
But then on the flip side, it's like, yeah, but I also like to go be dirty and be muddy and possibly fall in a river. Now you've got the the Yesu line, the FT line, right? Mm -hmm. And and what would Randy say if he were on here? Oh, he's going to be boofwang, probably. Boofwang. So, so Chief Ankara... Chief Ankara over on Twitch wants to know, what are the results? Any agreement on a radio? No. And and, and, and this was not like uh this is not a thing where we're all gonna come to a massive agreement and everybody be like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was well, second, second. Um you know, even Adam, Adam said uh the Elecraft KH1 is his favorite handheld. And you know what? That that's an honest, true answer because w- what what makes a handheld? I can put it in my hand and operate. Well, the KH1 does that, but it does it on multiple HF bands and can reach across the country, across the world, hypothetically, on a handheld radio, right? So it's a it's a fantastic point because that's you know if you think again, we're going back to who who was it? It was it was James Hannibal who who pulled out the uh, where was it? I'm going back up the the live stream right now. Well, you do that. Uh, Slapo Man on YouTube says G90 is the best HT. G90 is the best H. I would never G. I would never HT a G90. But nah. so so here. So I want everybody to to see this radio. What is this? Uh, U kits. So last solar cycle, which was when I was really getting into HF. So eleven years ago, when I was really really like. I want to get on HF. I want to do summits on the air. I want to do all this stuff. This radio hit the market. This called itself an HT, an HT with a with a hand mic. Okay, sure, we're we're all on board because if you if you consider what the world looked like at that time, this was the size of the radios that that came out. It was an integrated battery. You could do multi band with it, but you had to use HF band antennas. Right again, again newcomers. The antenna has to match the the transmitting frequency. So you're using the appropriate size antenna. Okay. But this, you could put a a 10-meter vertical antenna on this and operate 10 meters on it. This was my unicorn radio for a very, very long time. And then newer radios came out. I realized, like, okay, it was was a, a, a statement of the time. And at the time, it was the high solar cycle, which made this like an a actually really interesting radio for some people. And yeah, it has a speaker grill and the microphone slot. There's a ton of stuff going on with this thing. This was a wild radio, wild. Uh, you, you'd never see this radio anywhere. Like, I, I don't know of anyone who owns one. I've never seen one in the wild. If I end up finding one, I'll probably buy it if I can used. Um, but it's... <laughs> It's kind of a wild boy. It, it's it's it, it's a very niche radio. So James, are you there? James, is this your favorite handheld still? Is he gone? Oh, he's gone. No, James. I have Quirky James still in the chat. Well, he's connected. It doesn't mean that he's there. He's washing dishes. Yeah, that radio definitely looks like it's from Talus or or Raquel. Uh, it, it has no IP rating at all whatsoever. It's like full ing- like it, it 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 is an amplified ingress if you if you hit it with water. Yeah, it it just it it just has very uh embitter vibes to it, it. it. It has ducting ports that focus the water directly to the most vulnerable parts of the radio. <laughs> That's the kind of radio it is. And and nobody's going to mention the rapid radio. Uh, nope. I don't think so. <laughs> Good. I I don't know. I, I I like the FT60 comment. Best handheld is an FT60. I could see that. Like if if you just want to do VHF UHF things, you just have a really good radio with a really good front end, really good receiver. Like possibly one of the best receivers. Super heterodyne radio. Really really good sound. Um that's that's one of the that's one of the best. Like when I was, I, I I grew up. I cut my teeth, if you will, on a repeater with guys that were quick keying and a little bit salty language and all that stuff on a repeater. 
And they'd all tell you, it's like, oh, you know, you need a duplex radio. Where's your duplex? You can't hear the people talking. You're trying to talk. You're du- you're, you're doubling with people. You need a duplex radio. It's like, okay, well, what, what duplex radio should I use? They're like, you got an FT60 somewhere? And I'm like, I do. I'm like, use the FT60. Put it on an external antenna away from your transmitting antenna. Use that. That's That's your duplex radio because it's got a really good front end, and you can hear when the people are done talking so that you can quick key as good as the rest. Um, and then we'll work on the Yagi, so you can fire that RF directly into the repeater. Uh, different type of, you know, the, almost the CB of ham radio, but, you know, it was it was good times. Was that the Renegade machine? No, I never I never was active okay. on 435. Uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> okay, good. No, I, I was not a 435 guy. But I was a uh, uh, K6... Oh, no, what is it? Henry. What's Henry's repeater? And BB. K9KAO. K9KAO. That's it. That's it. Henry and uh and BB. BB. Oh Henry man. Henry and BB. BB yes. is actually like a very smart guy. BB is insanely smart. Have you hung out I with BB at all? I met him Dude, BB is insane. That that guy is <laughs> insanely smart. Okay, so there's a YouTube question from Sam. Go for it. He needs a recommendation for $100 or less for a radio that won't make me put it down the moment I get my license. I don't need to use it beforehand beyond listening unless GMRS with brother-in-law. So $100 or less for a radio that won't that he won't regret, basically. Buy a, U- buy a Baofeng UV5R off Amazon for 18 bucks. Like I, I, I don't So Sam, I would love it if you would join us on the Discord and hop on voice so you could like flesh out what you mean by a lot of this, but there's a lot of nuances in the periphery here that we're not getting. So I'm 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 not against so everybody, I'm looking right at the camera. I'm looking right down the barrel on this one. I'm not against anybody that buys a radio and says, Hey, I just want to put this on the shelf. I'd rather you be a part of the community, even though that your part of the community is a is a radio on a box on the shelf. Thank you. Thank you for thinking that this is an important thing. Because it is. It is. With that said, I, I talked about this earlier. You can't go buy a Glock and put it in the safe and say, oh, now I can shoot. You can't buy a tourniquet and say, oh, now I can shut off the blood flow if I pop my femoral artery. You can't do the same thing with a radio. You have to be radioactive. You have to be using the radio to some degree of your level of comfort where you feel you can operate it in your planning to be useful with it. So a bunch of UV5Rs, go buy go buy five UV5Rs. Okay, hear me out. Go buy five UV5Rs, set them all up with local frequencies, and set them up with some talking frequencies, two-way talking simplex simplex frequencies. Just something you pick that your friends can be on, that they're all keyed up on at the same time, and then put them away. Charge them up, you know, whatever. If you got off-grid charging, great. If you don't, then you're going to have to keep them charged. Spoiler alert. That's the way I would go. Keep it simple, because if you're not really committed to this, then it's the same way that you'd be committed to Band-Aids. It's the same way that you'd be committed with a, a Taurus. Oh, hey, congratulations on your Taurus handgun that you bought. That's fine. You, you got a gun now, so you can put it in the in the in the safe, and you're and you're good to go. But you, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do it right, if you're not gonna be a part of the community, that's fine. I take that back. You don't have to be part of the community, but you do have to actually practice this stuff because that's the only way you're gonna get good at it. Period. It's the only way. So that's where I would leave that. Does that make sense? Am I, to, am I firing on I, some some of the I, cylinders? I'd say 100% uh, with that. A uh, couple other suggestions. Uh, the TYT MD UV390 and the Redivis RA89. And, of course, Jody, in his infinite wisdom, dropped the uh, six-pack of the UV5R in the uh, chat. There you go. And if you go to, uh, by the way, if you want to help me out while doing any of this, uh, there's links in the show notes to my Amazon store. If you click on that and then search for anything, 
including Baofengs. That'll pull it up. I, I did try to link a bunch of stuff in the uh, show notes that you can follow. That would help out the channel if you want to do that. I'd appreciate it. And if you're watching on Twitch, send me your Amazon Prime. Send me Jeff Bezos money. Send that to me. If you have Amazon Prime, you have the ability to send me your subscription on Amazon Prime to Twitch, and that would be great. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've done it for 48 months now. Oh, my God. Dude, you are the – you're probably number I'm one. I'm the Niper Mike. That's me. Oh, thank you, so, man. I appreciate that. Uh, it's something like 46 or something. I don't know. I've That's forgotten. amazing. I just thank leave you. it. I just tick, make sure I tick it every month. For all my, uh, all my friends on Twitch, all I got to show you is this. Actual video game for radio. I hope you saw the live stream. We'll be back in two weeks. We're going to play more of Full Quiet. All right, back to the show. Oh, speaking of Full Quiet, do you want to leak the uh, the code I gave you? Yeah, don't do SOS into any of the Morse machines because it makes it hard mode. If, you're, if you give the universal sign for help, the game takes that as being you need the game to be harder. You don't want that. Don't do that. So many people told me about that. By the way, they're like, "Yeah, don't don't put SOS in the uh, the game. It'll, it'll we, make it really." Last difficult. night, last night on our uh, anti net, I know very very anti climatic there. Our anti net, uh, one of the uh, guys I'm friends with, he was talking about that. Well, I told you, but I'll tell everyone else. Uh, he was. Uh, talk he was watching your stuff and uh he tried you know he knows he knows sos and a couple other morse code characters yeah and so he put that into the you know, morse code here and the game came back hard mode enabled uh, i'm like oh yeah i gotta tell josh about this don't one. do that don't do that yeah i was aware of that i did i wasn't even gonna dip into it because it was like no we're not I can play Mega Man. I can play Mega Man 1, and I can beat it. So I would call that pretty good NES competence. This game is hard. It's a very hard game. Full Quiet is very difficult. Did anybody pick up the Steam version? A lot of people did. It was really oh, cheap. Okay. It was on sale. And Yeah, and I just was wondering, is it a, is it a good port? I was told it's very good. Oh, okay. So Sam has joined the Discord, and uh, I'm working to see if he has a PTT button set up, so maybe he can expand on his question. All right. Set that PTT button. Anyone want to add to their uh, favorite handheld ham radio thoughts? Go ahead. Hey, Josh, it was the high point, not Taurus. High point. Nah, back in my day, it was Taurus and Keltec. Again, I existed before the one hundred dollar wrapped high point, <laughs> but you know I I hear where you're coming from. I get it. I'll add to the favorite HT. Uh, go ahead, Shane. And, and no, it's not going to be a Motorola this time. Oh, I can't believe it. Yes, this is way before I got into Motorola, but this is probably around two thousand nine, two thousand ten. My favorite HT that I have probably ever had since I became a ham was the Yesu VX6. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. And I and I say that because that radio is like the mini version of the FT60 and it did I think it did 6 meters like it transmitted on 6 meters, right? Well, it was tri-band. Uh the was, the VX6 yeah, it was, was tri-band. It was fully submersible, so I've literally dropped yes. it in a pool and transmitted on it in the pool, underwater. No problem. And it worked. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. That And that, I would say the one downfall to that one was the belt clip, because if you sat down the oh, wrong yeah. way and it yeah. tagged, it broke. That's where it had that weird twisty the little knobby thing where you had to drop yeah. it in. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That was a VX7. The VX6 no. had, a, had it fixed. The VX6 had a fixed belt clip. Oh no, the the, the the clip on that is horrible. I switched it out yes. to the the, the, the drop in. Have you not seen the drop you in dropped, for this? It's really good. They, they made a swivel. Yeah, yeah. So you you have a little nubbin that goes onto the yeah. the, the body of the radio, and it it drop it, it drops in, and you have like to rotate the VX7. it. 
you have to rotate it 180 degrees to break it out of the drop in. Yeah. But it's the VX7, but yeah. No, the VX6 has the same thing. You can do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, so, but the, it's factory for the VX7, but the factory clip for the VX6 was terrible. And, mm. uh, but there, I remember there Agreed. was a hack. There was a hack for the VX6, like a Mars mod hack, where it would transmit from, oh, geez, like below this, like around 10 meters all the way up to almost 900 megs. Like, it was pretty crazy. That's a good radio. That was a great radio. So that's uh, that's they my They still two sell cents. it. It's still available. I know. It's still in production. <laughs> All right. We're going to switch to 40 now. I think we're at the point where we're going to go to 40. Yeah. When I when I first got started, there was a the, the very first dual band radio. And I don't even mean, like... I mean, of any of the radios that we could buy, the first dual band radio we had was the Alinko DJ 580. And it, that's because it was the only one at that time that was affordable. So really, this thing was the Baofeng of its day, if you will. You're right. Um, but the thing that was amazing about it, and still why some of these things exist, is this thing was a full duplex and dual watch mm -hmm. and it uh, performs really well and doesn't have the uh, desync issue that like more modern radios have because uh, you know the older technology but uh, I I mean we, we bought one of those when we first could and so did everybody in the club because it's like a dual band handheld and look how inexpensive it's probably five or six hundred dollars too but i mean that was cheap back th back then i mean because uh, a lot of our radios were probably more than that um so anyway i i still i still got the thing hanging around i just need to get a new battery for it it, it works it's just uh but it's a really nice radio what it always was right on i seem to remember there being a standard that was uh, also available at the same time but i can't remember what the model number was well this is the only one i remember ever hearing about and it may be that that was the only one that we could get our hands on out over here because yeah. remember standard used to be and i think they were bought by the yasu's parent company and it disappeared mm. Well, so so many things of that era disappeared. I did land a couple of actually about a week ago. I went to a ham fest here in uh, well, it was in Irving when all the other guys were down at the Houston ham fest, and I actually won a radio at that at that meeting, um, a handheld even, and uh, I haven't even opened the box on it. It's a ICOM uh, ICT10. And, um, but, um, I, I also picked up a, uh, an AEA, uh, TNC and, uh, it works. So I'm going to start working on getting back into packet radio. All right. I don't know what, it, what just happened. There it is. Okay. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking. My radio stopped working. Uh, I will say, uh, just as a side note from the live stream, that um, that Android app, if you haven't explored that for this radio, is actually pretty cool. There's not a lot of Android apps or any applications that can just work with a radio. And uh, the radio does the heavy lifting, if you will, to do terminal mode. So it's doing all that stuff that it just, you, as long as you have an internet connection, you can do digital voice modes, which is pretty cool. So I, I was, I, I thought that was pretty awesome. Bluetooth range. So if you get outside the range of your tablet, then you're not going to be able to talk to it. But yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, well, go I, I think I'm going to take a last call. Last call. Anybody want to talk about their thoughts on the uh, best ham radio handheld? Sam actually has his PTT work, and he says, 
Okay, Sam, go for it. Well, so to clarify my question, so uh, I have GM SR, uh, my brother-in-law, who's actually in the chat too, uh, just looking for a radio that really I won't regret uh, buying later on. So uh, I set myself a budget of $100 just to make sure that it would satisfy everything later on. I mean, you do appreciate that there's no guarantee that I can mitigate you not being satisfied, right? Or anyone? Oh, a hundred percent. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, but we already we already answered the question. What what, what more do you want to know? Um, n not much. Uh, I know that uh, both my the my brother in law who's in chat and I are going for a technician soon. Okay, so good, good. Uh, just trying to gather information and trying to find out what I don't know so I can learn. So, like, literally, if you roll back uh, this video and just listen to everybody talking about their favorite handhelds, uh, some of them are going to line up with you and you're going to be like, yeah, that's what I'm about. And then that's the way to go. But for $100, if you have to outfit a couple of people, I'd probably go with the Baofeng. I'd probably just get with the Baofeng UV5R off of Amazon because if, if it doesn't work, you ship it back. If you have problems, you ship it back. It's not a big deal. Within the first month you bought it, not a problem. That That's kind of the way I would go uh, because – I don't know, like, I mean, are you going to sit down and work out a comms plan? Are you going to put antennas on the roof? Like, are you going to go on the roof and set up an antenna? That's kind of the, the big question. you think you're going to do that? I can probably actually answer that one. I don't see him going on the roof. He'd probably have me do it. But you'd do it? You'd get, you'd get out there and... 100%. Okay, right on. All right, so... So that's kind of the thing, right? When when we get down to all of this, and it goes back to what uh, I think Don said earlier, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to this because I love this. This is a great this is a great theme. Handheld radios are low powered radios, and in the ham radio community, we call that QRP, which is a low powered radio. It doesn't give you a whole lot of output, and so the best thing you can do is give it a really good antenna. And so for VHF, UHF, it pretty much means you have to put it up on a high point on the roof to be a good performing antenna, right? So I, I like it. I like the, the fact that you're like, yep, yeah, we're going to set up good antennas. We're going to get them high as, as high as we can, and then, then we're going to try and operate on. I love that. that that's, what you want, that's where you want to be at because what you can do at that point is you keep the handheld for the car or you know your backup your personal carry radio or whatever and you put like a 50 watt radio a mobile radio on that base station antenna connection that you have that's when it's really going to be con consistent mm -hmm. that's what you want you want consistency 50 watts can is going to be way more consistent can i add something to that yeah go ahead man so uh, be sure that you get very high quality coax because uh, a handheld radio at five watts, if it goes up a significant, you know, say 50, if you're running 50 feet of coax or something like that, you're going to want to make sure that you have high quality coax, which means you're going to spend some money on it. But you're going to lose less of that signal as it go, travels down that coax than if you don't don't get something like RG58 or go go to a, a CB shop and, and buy coax. Go and get reputable good coax. And the thing about that is, no matter what you do later in your ham career, that good coax will still be there with you, and you'll still be yep. it'll still be worth using. Well said. Hey, Josh, can I chime in on the last one? Yeah, go ahead, man. I think the best radio is the one that gets out. <laughs> and I'll just leave that out. Well, that's, Comment, that, Josh. that's why I run 1,000 watts. <laughs> Comment? Go ahead. This is Craig. Um, good guest, good show. I actually had to uh, catch up on all that before I dropped in here. But uh, for you guys that... Uh, are thinking prepping with the handheld. Uh, um, I do awfully good with the same handheld antenna developed by a couple of elk hunters 
for emergency comms, and I have no problem reaching 50 miles from my back deck to an 800-foot repeater with 5 watt. So it is your antenna. Hey, guys. I set off fire alarm, apparently, with a smoke machine. That's great. And, and I'll dogpile that and that say Don is absolutely correct as no. well. Coax makes a huge difference. Yeah. If it's, if it's the difference between five miles, you can't make it, and, and you're yeah. using cheap crap coax. And that doesn't need to be your first expense, but... When you do buy, make sure you're buying something like LMR for VHF and UHF. It's got to be for VHF and UHF because our repeaters that were put up 20 years ago uh, have RG213 on them, and it is not good for VHF and UHF. So we're having to go and put hardline in. Um, but they were put up one day, and RG8 is better than 213. LMR400 is better than that for home use. Uh, one thing on no, no. LMR, make sure you get Ultraflex. Do not buy solid wire with your handhelds or your 20-foot run up the side of the house. Take it from somebody who's got three spools of that garbage, and I will not ever use it again. You can't bend a five-foot radius with that stuff. Well, you can, but it's not going to work really well if you do it hard enough. Yeah. It, I mean, if you look at what Wait, Josh there's has. There's installation crackling. You messed up and should have bought Ultraflex Flexible Stranded Intercore. Oh. Jody. Jody has a, a hot call out. Uh, so I'm, I'm not trying to. Uh, Got to gotta give a shout out to Jody. So that, that radio I have, or, or not. I don't have it anymore. I actually shipped it back to the uh, to the owner. That is a pretty rare radio uh, that had a drop in system for a vehicle, so it would turn it into a mobile radio. That was so there, guys. I I hope everybody appreciates that. Like literally in the course of thirty years, the fundamental face of ham radio has changed in multiple areas, handhelds. HF, including interfacing with computers. I mean, I, I hope everybody realizes that even in the 90s and even in the the the, 2000, the very early, early 2000s, people had an aversion to computers and they were hand logging and QSL cards were hand written. Like even in the 2000s, this was a thing that was happening. So ham radio has gone through a big revolution and i think as a byproduct of that like it's only going to get better and better and better it, it's it's going to be great it's it, it continues to be great every year ham radio has been getting better and better and i'm just i love it hey josh yeah uh goblicon in discord uh said i just went in today and took the tech the general passpo didn't even think of buying a radio until i passed the test first go Good. on both Good just for you. got the test out of the way or just get the test out of the way you might just get a radio listen and never get the license like i would have took three weeks of study now need the icom 705 there you go uh i will say though god it's such it's kind of tough because on one side, the 705 is a $1,200 radio, QRP, 10 watt maximum, but we're rolling into the high side of the solar cycle. So if someone were to say, oh, would you go into, you know, where you're at right now with a QRP radio on the high side of the solar cycle? Absolutely. I would go in with the QRP radio. I think you'll be fine, particularly if you're thinking about doing CW or anything like that. Morse code. Heck yeah. No problem. You're going to have a great time. But I know how low it goes because we went through it, right? The the peak of – actually, when my channel really started to take off was on the low side of the solar cycle. We were like 2018, deep side, low side, super low. Everything was super low band, late night, late night contacts. But to be honest with you, some of my longest QSOs have been – at that late night, like 30 meter FT8 conversations that I've had in my life was at that time. So it's, I, I, I don't think I don't think you'll ever be upset from buying a 705. 
Let me just say that right up front. With that said, I think that if you're new, if you're new to ham radio, you're going to make more contacts with a 100-watt radio. You will. You'll just straight up make more contacts. You're going to make more contacts. It's almost going to feel a little bit easy. It's going to feel like cheating on the high solar cycle at 100 watts, right? So that would be my only point. If, if you're only going to be portable and you want to go backpack style and hike, then the 705 is where it's at from my point of view. But uh, Hey, Josh. Yeah. Um, even with U.S. Navy training, a licensed technician, if I had to go through all the mistakes I've made and configuring antennas and losing DBs here and there, yeah. um, I would be an absolute fool to start ham radio with the QRP radio. I'd break no pileups, and I would have talked to nobody. With that 991A, I've got 200 countries now. I, I mean, I, I hear what you're coming from, but you're coming from the mm -hmm. standpoint of somebody breaking pileups, right? Right. Versus like someone that's going to be potentially doing with that either. But you know what I mean? Well, oh, I've lost half my thanks, wattage. Thanks, just making thanks for coming back to say that you're not breaking pileups with 100, 100 watts either, I guess. But if, if you're like doing POTA activations, by the way, I, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of the people, particularly younger people that are getting into ham radio, they're looking at this as like an outdoor hobby, which to be honest with you, guys, there's no better thing that we could dive in on than, than to, you know, yes, support this, this trend. Your, your situation in, in radio is going to be fundamentally different from anyone else asking me this question. So if you want to be a homebody and you just want to wake up in the morning like I do many times and just have a, a cup of coffee that you hold with two hands and you just got that warm moment and you want to make contacts, heck yeah, 100 watts with an amplifier? Yeah, buddy, we're not questioning anything. Let's turn on the juice and let's get all those things done. And I'll make tons of contacts. But if you're talking about like a radio that just kind of does everything and you can take it portable and do all that stuff. The 705 is hard to beat. Like, tell me of a radio that does what the 705 does. There's nothing like it, period. And you can break pileups with QRP. Look at uh, K0KLB. He breaks my pileups with, like, one watt, 4,000 miles away. Yeah, I just... I it, It's so hard for me to... Sometimes sometimes we get in these situations where people ask really good questions like just Josh just tell me the answer. I just need to know what I need to buy. And that's why we do the live stream. That's why we have people that come on with their voice so I can ask them questions. So if it's text, it's really hard for me to give you the definitive answer unless we talk. Like that's, you know, that's that's the reality of it. Go ahead, man. I took uh, almost 3 years to buy that 991. So I'm, it does everything I want, and, and it's portable. Well, anything's portable I, if you try hard enough. Gray Man, jump in there, buddy. It, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was getting ready to say. So, I, you know, I was, I'm just now, you know, at 10 years into this, just starting to venture into QRP. And, and I say that from the standpoint of, you know, I think um, having that more power when you are newer to operating HF and kind of the nuances and the in the in the idiosyncrasies of HF. Once you understand that, then I think you know start reducing the power is probably a better way to go. But I I think a lot of people might get discouraged right off the bat if if uh, QRP is is what they start off with. I don't think you're wrong. I don't I don't think you're wrong. And but but here's the thing. So what what radio are you going to point people towards? So the seven ten field, the seventy three hundred, yeah, yeah, go 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 that direction. That's probably going to be better off for you in most situations, because unless you're like, and and this is why you know getting on chat is important, because if you come back to me and say, Josh, I only backpack. That's what I that's what I do. If you come back and say, Josh, uh, I can't. I can't have a shack in my home because of an HOA or, you know, whatever, or the noise floor is too high or whatever. And I only do portable, you know, bench portable, like literally from my from my trunk to the to the bench. Yeah, 7,300, 710, 
Get on the air. No question. 100 watts going to be better for you. No problem. But, but, I don't think any of the uh, the 710 or the 7300 does the same things that the 705 does. Are you going to do VHF and UHF on that? No. You have to have the 7, 705 or the 991 Alpha or 7100, whatever you want to go. Oh, no, I want to remote it only. I want to put it in my shack when I'm not when I'm not, you know, actively doing parks on the air and I want to remote into it. Oh, okay. So 7610. Uh I uh Yesu FTDX10, FT101, you know, 710. Go up the list, right? The, 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 that the cost value all of a sudden goes really high and the 710 all or the 705 all of a sudden looks really reasonable having Wi-Fi and network capability on board so it, it's it, it's a question of what you're going to do with it it's always a question of what you're going to do with it and when you say like oh I got to be out at the door for a thousand dollars okay well that's like I can give you five options but that's not really going to be satisfying if I don't know truly the answer to your question based off of what you're telling me you want to do with it, right? Does that make sense? Am I, hopefully? You, you know, another, another thought with the... A lot of guys should probably uh, go to some events, hang out at HRO, go to some clubs, please, follow radio. Please, what yes. What you want to do first. You're absolutely 100% right. Yeah, I mean, I, I can point, I, I can spend your money. I, I could I could give you just like, oh, you're doing portable? FT891, do it. Not a not a bad answer. A good answer. Yeah. Right. And and get on those uh, web SDRs and listen, right. listen, listen. Yeah, yeah. I could I, I could give you I could give you all the answers all the time and spend your money every hour of the day. But the reality is that's not a, a real solution of like what do you want to do with it? Like what do you really think it, like if money was no option and you just like were to do the thing you wanted to do. Are you going to be a weekend warrior, a hard charging, going out to the park and setting up a station? That's a different answer. If you want to be the, the I'm going to hold my mug with two hands, I'm going to wake up in the morning and get in front of the shack and just make contacts in the AM to DX, that's a different answer, right? All these things are, are different answers. And one radio doesn't necessarily solve both of them. That's the other problem, right? They're almost like separate tools that you have in your toolbox that you could use for different things. A lot of them can be used in different ways. Like take a 7300 in your shack. That could be your 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 coffee in the morning radio that you work, you know, DX with. And then you pick it up and you take it out to a park and you do parks on there. You could do that with the 705, no question turns into a pain in the butt a little bit you disconnect everything and have to relocate it but you can do that and i've been there i've done that but it's you know that that's that's up to you man that that's the reality of it the only other thing i would tell new guys after just the last six months with a new radio they're not windows 11 they're not apple you will have to learn how to use that device. It's not going to coach you through ham radio. I've learned how to actually use all those menus and tune the receiver. Yeah, I, I actually there, there's a video I'm I'm tr I'm working through in my head on talking about this, but it, it it that is a seriously important point. I get messages every day like, Josh, will you just program the radio and sell it to me? Will you program the radio and like give me everything I need. I just I just want a turnkey solution. I, I don't I don't want to think about it. I don't want to do anything. I just want it to be super simple. And the reality is is, is no. I can't because I can't teach you how to shoot. I can't teach you how to stop a bleed. I can't teach you how to be a good radio operator. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. You can't sell radio operation. You can't sell microphone time you can't sell the operating of a radio to somebody i can't do it i could put all the laminated cards in there 
I could say, oh, if you're on channel one, do this. If you're on channel two, do this. Yeah, sure, I can do all that. But is that going to make you a better actual user of the radio? No, it's going to be a hammer to you most of the time. You have to want to do it. It's just like shooting. It's just like first aid. Outdoors, field craft, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same stuff. And if you're not willing to commit to that, then okay. That's fine. Do GMRS. Do something else. It's okay. It's fine. Even with GMRS, I've gotten people that are like, oh, will you program the repeaters in my area for this radio and send it to me? No, I'm not going to do that for you. I'm not going to do that because that's like fundamentally the point of all of this. Like you you have to be able to do this on your own. That's that's what this is. It, it, it's a skill. You have to build it. You have to grow that muscle in your brain to to be able to do it, period. I got a comment to add to that. Yeah, go ahead. In the shooting community, uh, they had the um, elder crowd that could shoot a forty five really well one-handed in the, I think they call it a bullseye position or something like that. Yeah, the long, the long stretch. <laughs> Yeah, and they yeah. basically say, beware of the guy that only has a 1911 because he can really shoot it. Well, that same thing goes for the guy that's got the ICOM 718 that's had it for as long as it's been out. He can use that radio really well. It's not the best radio, but he can really use it well. I've got two ham in my club that uh, they swear by it, and it's like, golly, man. And then you go listen to it, and yeah, so... I, I didn't dig in. I I use the 706 more than I use anything else. It's just yeah. I don't need more radio. To, to be honest, like, you, you want to know the guys who really kill it out there? It's the guys who have been, like, trekking hard with the Yesu 817. You, you mentioned the number, and it, it just reminded me that 817, 818, those guys have been, like, out there forever. 706, Mark II G, all those guys that are just been like, this is the radio I got, this is the radio I'm running. They're all super experienced from doing it, from using it, from being disadvantaged as technology moved on and they just kept going with it. And they're like, oh yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna make it work. It it's really hard. It, it's always really hard for me. I get a ton of messages from people. It's like, oh, just tell me the thing to buy. It's it's like I I can't it do, it doesn't exist. There's no one thing, and and even as we found out as we're talking with what is the best handheld, there's no best handheld. It, it's really more of something that over time that you learn that you like, right? Uh, again, it, there's no Glock 19 of of ham radio. It doesn't exist. I guess I, I guess it's the Baofeng, but even that feels like I'm selling the Glock short at that point. And Josh, I'm going to have to jump out of here, but I'm going to leave you with this one from yeah. uh, Sam in the chat. This conversation is very helpful. It's only helping form my conviction to get my license. He appreciates the time and patience. Good. And with that, I'm out of here for a nice long 12-plus hour work shift. I'll catch you all later. All right. Well, stay safe, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for all your help. I, Long's too. Horn one for me, Frank. Yeah. You know, I, what... Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. I'll, you're what, the last one I got to go. Is uh, a lot of people are interested in buying something, yeah. Uh, but it really comes down to putting your butt in the chair and doing the work. Yeah, man. Uh, always, always. I mean, okay, ha okay. Straight up, like uh, you buy a car, right? You buy a car. You got to learn the car. You set your butt in the seat. You learn the car, right? N there's no way to abstract your human knowledge and that that learning you have to do from a thing you have no experience in. And if anyone says, like, oh, ham radio, we'll just buy a thing and it's going to be a solution, no one says that. And anybody who asks is like, oh, t give me the turnkey solution for this. I'll give you a turnkey solution that will get you, like, close, but everything else is all on you. And everything is built upon you diving in and understanding the complexities of all of this because there are a ton, a ton and th there's no there's no replacement for stick stick time, whether it's shooting a gun, being a, 
like accurate. Are you kidding? Like, you know how long that takes? There's people who spend thousands of dollars that all they're doing is tweaking their aim to be a more precise shooter in whatever they're doing. Shotgun, rifle, handgun, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So to assume, it's almost, it, it's, I'm not offended, but it's almost offensive that people can just say like, oh, I'm just going to do radio today. I'm going to add that to my capability in my in my in my preps. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, I'm just going to be able to do this. I got the bow fangs. We're all good to go. It's almost offensive to me. It's it's the way like if so if someone rolled up to a three gun competition and they're like, well, I got my uh, I got my hundred dollar wrapped high point. I'm ready to go. Mm, probably not. Right. Like it, it, it it's like. Guys, come on. You have to you have to consider that this is a more complex hobby than that. It's a more complex preparedness sit angle than you've ever been exposed to at the technical level that again, you haven't been exposed to. How do I stop a bleed? Put a bunch of pressure on it. I know it's more complex than that depending on where it's at. How do I shoot better? Yes, there's lots of things. And if you're a long rifle guy, I know. I know it's very complex. Lots of maths. But with radio, the, the science aspect and how it works is through the roof different than anything you've ever experienced before. It's not like anything else. There's nothing like it. Anyone, please dive, dive you know in. know how it comes together, Josh? It's, it's S6 noise out there, and the conditions are terrible. And an old-timer you know has far better experience in radio than you says great audio wow right right when when you're uh see you know what it's like how do you how do you train an ear to listen to radio right like how do i do that how how do i put that into a video like okay guys we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental parts about radio training your ear to hear human speech in the noise how do I do that? Oh, I literally put up 1,900 hours of listening on a radio. I grew up listening on shortwave in horrible situations. Why do I hear good signals? Because I can, like, literally, I've been doing it for a very long time. Whether it's broadcast, amateur, shortwave, doesn't matter. That's, again, a skill. You have to, you have to train your ear to be able to do that. Great point. Great point. Wonderful point. What's kind of interesting? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, hey, Josh, can I play devil's advocate for a moment? Yeah, well, Lars is very good at that. <laughs> I know you are. Go ahead. <laughs> so I will play devil's advocate by saying um, that from, for, from somebody who is a very new technician coming from myself, sure. um, I understand what you're getting at, and I agree with most of what you're saying, but I'll play devil's advocate by saying that if there was somebody like me who was on the fence prior to them getting their technicians or they're thinking about getting their technicians and they're trying to figure out what it's all about. So they say, well, teach me radio, right? I think from my perspective, I can understand a complete newbie coming into this because I'm, I'm one of those newbies. That kind of question would lend itself to be more of a, um, what what do I need to what do I need in order to do this? And if they're saying, can you can you set me up with something? It's because they want to get started. They want to get in there and start playing around. But there's a um, d deluge of information, and it's almost impossible from a newbie's perspective to sort out the noise. For the clarity, you ask the, – the, the, the question is, what's the best HT? The reason why they're asking that question is because, well, one, HTs can be very expensive. And do they have to buy a $500 HT? Can they get away with a $100 HT? They don't know the answer to those questions. Yeah. So the reason why they're asking what's the best HT, what should they buy, is so that they know they're not wasting their money on something that they're going to have to sell because it didn't do what they – needed it to do because they don't they don't know what they needed to do they don't know anything about the hobby yet they're still learning there's not yeah. an answer to that you're yeah. gonna buy a lot of hts and a lot of radios and you're gonna listen for 1900 hours that's the answer yeah uh so uh on honestly 
Uh, Craig is right, but Lars, I completely understand where you're coming from. So that that's the reality of a lot of this is that this hobby was built upon people who tried a lot of things, experimented, even with their money, to buy other radios, new radios, etc., and then came upon the things they like, right? So the only way to short path that is to join a club, find somebody who's done a lot of that, and then for them to be willing to provide their time to answer that question. The the, hold on. The reality of that is that the number of people that are doing that has gone down over time because they've either passed away or, you know, they're just at the advanced age that they're just not really willing to do that. Now, I know that, you know, on YouTube, we're, we're trying to do a lot of that stuff, but your angle that you're taking it, the, the, the question you're posing is a good one. And, and I, I, I think that we could probably be better served to, to point some of the, the way we talk to that demographic, I think would, would, would be better the the problem is is that like you 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 can't replace the stick time, right? That's the that's the real the real thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I I understand. Yeah. I mean, I, I, as someone who uh, you know as well as I do, and when you yeah. talk about the firearm analogy, I know as well as you do that. Oh, you yeah. just can't. Just, I know. Oh, I well, know you know. I know you yeah. know. You know, I, I get that, uh, and and there's the quote unquote stick time required to get good at any new skill. I understand that. And I agree with that a hundred percent. You can't learn experience from somebody else just telling you what to do. You have to do it yourself and fail and try again. I get that. I think it's a lot of it is from the perspective of people coming into the hobby of, like I said before, the noise the proverbial noise in the hobby because there's so many facets to it, whether it's digital, whether it's analog, whether it's HF, VHF, UA, the, the, it goes on. The things I don't even understand yet. A lot of things I don't understand yet. Um, and when they come to say, when they come to YouTube and they look up ham radio, that, that's what they're going to type in. They're going to go to YouTube and type in ham radio and they're not going to look up ICOM 7300. They're not going right. to do that. They're going to type in ham radio and then look at the results come back from ham radio. And none of those videos are even remotely related to one another other than the fact that they're somewhat ham radio related. But yeah. that's it. It's a 30,000, 60,000 foot view of a hobby. People don't know how to discern between these things so when they're asking these questions i understand why they ask these questions it's because they want to get a finer point on what it is exactly they're looking for right and when we i mean i get it you guys are way into the weeds on this hobby yeah that's, that's but that's actually a problem is that we can't so I, I I myself have found uh, ham radio crash course has found myself in the situation where I can't sometimes elevate myself out of the weeds because you're right. There people are looking for the the you said sixty thousand foot level. Let's go to that level. That's what we're they're talking about. Like I have no knowledge in this. I have no knowledge in this. And as hard as I tried to uh, accumulate all of my videos into a. a what I think is a playlist for newcomers. You're right. I still get a thousand questions that are basically the same thing. Like, how do we get started? I'm at the zero level, but like they, 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 they can't even chew upon the elephant, right? Because the, the pieces are too damn big. You have to break it down to this smaller and smaller degree for them to be able to chew upon it, which is really difficult. Like it, it it's, 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 it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Absolutely. Comment. Uh, go ahead, comment, and then we'll go back to Lars. You got something to add. All they're looking for pretty much is a leg up and kind of short circuit what is such a huge hobby. And and that's basically what you're saying is they're, they're looking to shortcut and get a leg up on and not have to go through all the insanity that some of us have done. But I don't know that they're it. See, that's the thing is I, I don't know that it exists. That's a, hey, Josh. Oh, okay, I'll give you an example. 
Yeah, go ahead, I'm Lars. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I'll, go, I'll Lars, go ahead example. and go to the, the other person. Yeah. Let's say let's say I'm I'm, I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm a I get my technician's license. I got my now. I know that as a technician, there's only certain bands I can transmit on, uh, or certain frequencies. Let me rephrase that. I, there's only certain frequencies I can transmit on within those bands as well. Like right. HF, I'm limited to like this tiny little sliver, you know, CW, and and a little bit of voice over here, and that's about it. But you you know uh, you get somebody who's like you know what I'm gonna go. I don't have my technician's license yet, but I'm gonna get my technician's license. I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna buy myself a really nice radio because I got the money to burn. And they buy themselves an ICOM 7300, and they set it up and they got everything. They got the power supply. They spent they spent like a couple thousand dollars. They've set up a nice big antennas, and they're just gonna listen. That's all the advice they hear. They you're just gonna listen. They get their technician's license. And they find out oh. I can't transmit on this yet because I need my general. Oh, I wish somebody had known that because maybe I wouldn't have spent a couple of thousand dollars on all this. I would have just bought, an, you know, a UHF VHF radio. Like it's that level of oh, I didn't know I couldn't do that. So I didn't know. Part part of that is, uh, I mean, if if you get your technician's license and don't know what bands you can transmit on, that's kind of a problem. Um, and I know I'll catch sl some slack for this, but one of the things that I always do when someone asks me questions is I ask them what research they've done. And if they haven't spent five minutes looking into what they're looking for or what they want to do, I ask them to go figure that out. Spend five minutes, come back, tell me what you've looked at, what you've learned. Um, cause I, I see it a lot on social media where people will, there's information out there that they don't look at. They'll just make a post in a ham radio group or a POTA group and they'll say, they'll put their question and then they'll check back in a couple hours to see if someone answered it because they don't want to spend even five minutes to look for something. Yeah. yeah but, but that's so one because of the you know what things. to look for. But one of the important, like in your example with the bands, a, a technician that someone who gets a technician license, part of getting their license is to know what bands they can transmit on. And, you don't have to know everything about anything, but you kind of have to, you know, if you want to get into a certain part of a hobby, spend a little bit of time before asking questions, because what a lot of people will do is they will ask, I don't want to say low value questions, but they'll ask questions that are so open-ended that it's hard to give someone a direct answer. Um, you know, so like what's the best HT? Well, you know, the best HT for me gets me on satellites. The best HT for someone else might have APRS. So asking asking good questions is very important to getting good answers. Yeah, so Eric, I, by the way, I, I totally agree with where you're coming from. But, like, so if you have to consider, like, where I, where I position my channel as being the newcomer's channel to a point, I've seen myself, like, diving down into the deeper complexities of ham radio, which... To a lot of new people, they they are un they're un they're incapable of being able to penetrate into that. So I'm with you. I, I get what you're saying, but I also see what Lars is saying, right? In that, guys, let me let me put this this way: When I started with this channel, my knowledge of ham radio was much lower than it is now. And it's only through the process of many years, and you all coming with me, thank you, by the way, for watching and all that stuff. But as I've gotten more skilled in it, I have almost become less able to reach into the unknown of what people don't know in the hobby. And that's a, that's a real thing that people have is they become more knowledgeable about something. They can't put themselves in the shoes of people who have no knowledge in it, right? So if you base your if you base the question that sometimes you get from newcomers in the concept of I can't understand their lack of understanding, then you might be able to play ball with them a little bit more because that's the reality of it is that we have all Eric yourself included, you you've actually Eric, I would say is you you are at a point where you're niched in harder than a lot of hams. Like you've got more experience than a lot of people in some areas, right? That that is almost impenetrable to some new hams, right? And that to explain the depth of how deep that iceberg goes to a newcomer, 
becomes almost impenetrable, particularly on a first time go around. Right? Does that make sense? uh, And I'll add to that. I'll add to that that it's not that they're asking the wrong questions. They are asking the wrong questions. The problem is they don't know what the question they right. need to ask is. Right, right. Yes. And, and and so a number of people in the in the YouTube chats are like, "Well, go find an Elmer because if you don't know, you're you're asking the wrong questions. You got to go find See, so assume that an Elmer doesn't exist. Assume just just take it to the worst-case scenario. Ham radio is in a situation where clubs are 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 still okay. Some of them not so much. There's a lot actually that are not so much okay. And they're starting to die off. And the reality is is that it is this whatever community we've built on YouTube and the Discords, not just mine, lots of Discords, but other people that are out there. That's what's kind of keeping a lot of this together right now, particularly for the newcomers, right? Because, like, how how hard is it for someone to walk into a club and be like, "I got I got all these questions, and I got all these questions," and I, how I'm often do they not- walk away like completely being unenthusiastic with the answer that's given to them? Probably nine times out of ten, if not more. I don't know. Go ahead. Somebody was going to say something. Even if you're an old man like me and you walk into a club, you're more than likely not going to be very pleased. Right. So, gosh, I I, I definitely have to go right now because sure, I got to get. I, some... I, I did not mean. No, to no, 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 Lars. This is a great. Again, this is th- honestly this this throws me back to like ten years ago when we were hanging out, man. Because this is these are the good questions we need. I I I, I need you poking at this. Because this is what you're good at, and I love it. Um, you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but at the same time, there there's no quick answer to any of this. That's kind of why we do the like, come join us on the Discord, get your voice on here. I need to hear you. I need to hear your your situation. Yes. Explain it, because there there's no. It's like a shoe. It's it's got to be the right fit. It's got to be sized for you in your situation with radio. And then that comes with some learning. You got to learn yourself up too, because again, I can't make you shoot better by selling you a box, right? You, you got to put the time in to be better at it. That's the reality of it. I think. Hey Josh, real quick before you go. Yeah. Um, I just want to let you know, I'm still looking for that, um, power supply for the VX too. So once I get my hands on it, I'll uh, get with you and figure out how to get that to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me know, man. I right, appreciate it. Thanks, sorry for the interruption. Yeah, no problem. All right. Hey, John, are you uh, familiar with HFQSL? HFQSL? No, what is that? It's uh, HFQSL, Queen Sierra Oscar. Um, oh, QSL. They spend okay. four hours a day um, going up the bands as a net every day, and it's not formal net. It's Tune in, say hi, can you hear me now, is literally the live version of what you're doing on the radio every day. So if anybody's uh, new to HF and you want to be able to make mistakes and not get yelled at, HF QSO, just Google it. Fantastic, best thing I ever found. Eric Uh, from Hand Radio Concepts is on there, I believe. Oh, good. That's excellent. Uh, so the the amazing thing of like a traveling net band traveling net that makes you explore band capabilities on your station, and if you can't be on one band, that's okay. Catch up with them later. But the fact that you can work through that that's good operator skill. Really good. I love it. It has a live chat and a website to go with it. So oh my gosh, that's amazing. That. Amazing. Yeah, these guys, they don't charge a thing, and they pay for it out of their own pockets. What'd you call it? What, let's pull it up. They have a website? HFUSO. Uh, I believe it's .com and .net. Excellent. All right. I'm going to grab the link here and drop it off to you all. Go check them out. All right, there you go. So we ID every 10 minutes on the 10s? 
What is that? Okay, well you Not you guys really. look into this. You got you guys look into this. This this the already sounds. Like... Are in there and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go go to the website, check it out. But uh, I'm assuming it's daytime, particularly for the 10 meter band. Anyway, I got to wrap things up. I'm gonna go hang out with the family, and uh, yeah, it's already it's already getting real late. We this is a long one on the after chat, guys. Uh, I I had a great time with Dawn. I welcome back Ken Wood anytime they want to come back and chat with us. This has been amazing. I'm really excited for another Kenwood Mobile Radio, of course. Love Kenwood. And uh, I guess, Shane, I'll talk to you tomorrow, right? <laughs> Are you still there, man? Oh, did he bail? He bailed. See, he went to bed. He's like, Josh, thanks, thanks too late. for that guess, Josh. It justifies why I own a Kenwood. Yeah, I, I, I feel like um, I reiterate my point. Kenwood is the brand that everybody's just like, they make good stuff. We like that they're there. We hope they keep going. I, I can't say anything more about a brand. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. Get in there and uh, keep going. I Go just enjoy. hope they model it after their uh, higher-end mobile. Yeah, I, I'm telling you. Okay, so this is you guys, everybody watching. Go to their Facebook page and, and give them their comments. Don will feed that back. He he is uh he's a friend with Phil. Phil is like the the Ray Novak of 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 Kenwood, if you will. He, that'll that'll make it. It'll make it up the chain. So join the join the Facebook group. Link is in the description for this video. Tell them what you want in a mobile radio. And there you go. All right, guys, I gotta head out. I really do. It's already been really long, but I had this is a really good talk. It was a really good talk, and thank you, Lars. It was a really good. Lot, many points you made there. Um, I made a note to make Anytime. a video about some of what you said. So I'm hoping I can turn that into something useful. So I appreciate that uh, comment. All right. Josh, until. So what's the film, Josh? Which film? Well, you normally watch a film at this time of night. So. Uh, no, it's it's a little late. I don't know that Leia's going to want to do that. But uh, so Hammer Radio Crash Course podcast, a part of our podcast, we now have the HRCC Movie Club. And our movie club movie this week is The Postman from Kevin Costner, which is a three hour long video. I am, it's. It's bubblegum. It's not that, uh, it's not that bad to chew. No, it's, it's not like I am legend. I am legend is an emotional roller coaster from my point of view, but, uh, that was last week. Yeah. I can't watch that a second time. Yeah, not with the dog, man. You can't you uh you can't you can't build up a dog like that and take it away. Um Postman is Yeah. It it it's it's a three hour Kevin Costner movie that isn't Waterworld and isn't Dances with Wolves. I love both those movies, but I'm not a big fan of Postman. Three hours though. Ugh. It's almost eleven o'clock here. I'm not gonna stay up and watch that whole thing. All right, that's it. Take it easy, Time guys. Change tonight too, so it's midnight. Oh, that's true. I I save hours right now, right? I can I can actually I earn an hour no, to no, watch no, the post. Yeah, you bring forward. Spring no, it's forward. The wrong oh, way, forward. Josh. I lose an hour. hour. Oh my god. See, I can't be watching Postman. All right, everybody on the chat. Thank you so much. I will talk to you later. Seventy three. Thanks, Josh. Later. All right, so that's uh, that's it for me on the uh, Discord. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Boy, um, yeah, that was uh, Lars's uh, comments are sticking with me. I I made some uh, points on my little notes to make videos about. I think it's really good. And my wife said the same thing. Actually, she's like, Josh, I think it's time to turn back to basics. We got to get back to basics. And I said, Honey, what does that look like? And she's like, Teach the kids ham radio. And they went, oh, that's very basic, honey. She's like, yep, teach the kids ham radio. And that might be what it. That might be what it is. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have to think about it. I think she's. No one is wrong here. These are all good ideas. I only have so much time in the day, and until I talk to you again, seventy three. Enjoy the memes. See ya. All right, time for my evening beer. Good night, everybody. 73.